Yeah! From the KJSR.net main studio, located deep in the center of the earth, it's time for Nothing to Say, with DJ Charlie. Remember, you never know what will be said, but it's always interesting. And now, without further ado, here's the man himself, DJ Charlie. And good evening, friends. It's Sunday night. It's 7 o'clock. You're tuned in to either KJSR.net or NTS-show.com, and you're listening to me, DJ Charlie. And as always, friends, I am joined by my ever-lovely co-host, DJ Skunky. Hello, everyone. Who looks like she's absolutely glowing tonight. You might want to adjust your lights. I know, I know. When the sun comes down, you'll appreciate the glow. Because i got a lot of background thing. <laughs> I don't live in a cave like you do. Well, before we get to our guest tonight, uh, Skunky, you want to tell them about next week and what's ending and what's changing and what's not changing? Of course you'd have me say it. Okay. Um, just well, so here, it is kind of your job. Okay, yeah. Anyway, um, first thing is we're not going away. Um but we, there is a change. If you're listening to us on nts-show.com, nothing's going to change. You listen to us like you do every week. However, if you are listening to us now on kjsr.net, next week will be the last week you can do that. As of the 14th of September, mm-hmm. kjsr.net will no longer be doing live broadcasts. Doesn't mean it's shutting down. Doesn't mean it's going away. But it's turning over to a strictly podcast format. So all the DJs that you listen to on there, now live, will be available in podcast form. And if you want to hear our show live, you'll have to come over to nts-show.com. It's as simple as that. Speaking of which, if you are want to get in early and join us in the live chat now, you go to nts-show.com, look for the live video chat button, click on that, and join us in, in the live chat. You can, there's also a player at the top of the screen, so you can listen and type at the same time. Yep, that's right. And no, you do not need a webcam or a microphone to join the live chat. That's just for us. Yeah, I have to be on the cam. Yes, yes, you do, dear. As much as we pay for the system, you need to use it. Okay, uh, now we can catch up. Our guest tonight is Tony. Now, you may have seen our show notes about this guy. He lives over in Oregon. He is a reviewer on YouTube. He reviews everything, mainly food and personal products. And he does really good. I personally, I love his reviews. Skunky, she laughs her ass off at his reviews, but and he does really good. So, how accurate are his reviews, dear? Very good. Um, I, I am particularly fond of the Dollar Tree reviews because I'm a Dollar Tree fanatic. And the cheese <laughs> sticks, was it the Snaps brand cheese sticks? They were actually as good as promised, as was the. Um, I agreed on the Jamaican hand pie, too. A little hot, but still good. Tony, are you there? Can you jump in on this and tell Skunky a little more about these products? Yeah, the the uh, Eating the Dollar Store series was actually something that I had started because, you know, I, I mean, one thing that I do when I thought about what kind of format I wanted to put all my videos into mm-hmm. is I thought, uh, is I tried to think from a consumer viewpoint it's just like okay as a consumer what would i want to know i would want to know what it looks like what it smells like what it tastes like what it compares to what the price is and a lot of people are really interested in the nutritional value (laughs) and when i'm dealing with fast food it's just like are you serious do you really want to know that um i thought i did until i seen a couple of your reviews i'm like holy (laughs) moly Yeah, and yeah. I didn't tell about it. <laughs> Speaking of which, there was one the other night you did. Skunky, what was the one that he did the other night that we just completely flipped the, over? Was it the onion rings? 
Oh, the the Burgerville Onion Rings. Yeah, that's a uh, mm-hmm. that's a, a fast food chain that is only in Oregon and Washington. And by the way, Charlie, I am in Washington. I'm in okay. Vancouver, Washington, but that's just over the bridge. It, it, a lot of times when you look at travel books, mm-hmm. what you'll do is you'll find a book on Portland that'll include Vancouver, Washington. So Vancouver is kind of mm. like the redheaded stepchild of, of Portland. It just, you know, people don't really recognize it by itself. It's just like part of Portland, but it's actually Washington. Oh, greater, <laughs> Cin- greater Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio claims the northern part of Kentucky and calls it Greater Cincinnati. <laughs> right. <laughs> Including Louisville and Lexington. Oh, oh they, don't go, they don't go that far. <laughs> I don't know, dear. I've seen some people do it. <laughs> But anyway, that eating the dollar store series was something mm-hmm. that I had just started because I, you know, I I would walk down through the aisles and through the frozen food sections and wondering what these things taste like. Uh, the most notorious one was the um, ribeye steak, oh, the one dollar ribeye steak, and so I started doing that. I started doing that series, and people love it, especially the college kids. Absolutely <laughs> love it because they've got nothing but. You know, a dorm room and a microwave, and if they can find something good and cheap, they they eat it up. So they love this series. I constantly am getting hit with comments on the other videos. When is the next Eating the Dollar Store video coming up? Because so, when we were going to college, the, at most, if we were lucky, we had ramen. Otherwise, you had to like scrape pennies to get stuff. We didn't have Dollar Tree. I would have loved, right. loved Dollar Tree if I was when I was in college. Well, what did you do? <laughs> um, borrowed a lot of stuff from the uh, um, salad bar from from my uh, school cafeteria. Oh, you borrow it? You mean you'd give it back? Uh, the, the plates and silverware, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. Yeah, but, you know, you you make the huge salad that seems to be all peppers and onions because you because <laughs> you need a little of that and. <laughs> Now, see, I was lucky. I didn't do that. We had an Entman's. The actual Entman's factory was right down the street from campus, so we'd go down there and get the day old stuff. No, and they would. What is Entman's? Oh, you've never heard of Entman's? No. Oh, good lord! The best donuts on earth. Oh, really? So is it? It's a chain. I mean, uh, they they actually make donuts and pastries and cakes and things like that for stores. Oh, so so it's kind of like Franz. Similar, very okay, similar. That's what we have over here. Is we've got big mm-hmm. brands, bakeries, and we have outlets and stores. Yeah. But since we're so close to the campus there, they would give college students their day old stuff for free. Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah. So Look we'd load up. We would load up on them. Well, yeah. We had the village pa- village pantry at midnight. The donuts went on majorly on discount. Awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So everybody's like trooping to the village pantry because just five more minutes, those donuts that suddenly are full price are suddenly like magically seventy five percent off. Oh wow! You go, you're, yep. are you, are you going? So what happens to the donut between eleven fifty five and midnight? <laughs> <laughs> it suddenly is a day old now. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to work at a, a, um, a place, the a food brokerage place. That they would store like, you know, just that they would have like a freezer, a big walk-in huge freezer full of all this stuff that mm-hmm. was just, um, you know, things that they would take to food shows. But once the uh, expiration date hit, I had to throw it all away. And I'm talking these huge, these huge amounts of food. It's just like, no, I don't want to throw it all away. So I finally asked if I could take it down to one of the uh, shelters down here in Portland. And so, you know, they allowed me to pack it up in the um, in the company vehicle and, and take it down to the food shelters. Because it was this food that had just expired that day. It was still good because it's frozen, first of all. Uh-huh. And it's just like, oh, man, look at all this waste. i got to take this down and give it to people who need this. Oh. That's, yep. what I like about, that's what I like about Dollar Tree because a lot of, I mean, they're making more products strictly for Dollar Tree, but it used to be a lot of the Dollar Tree products were things that didn't sell well. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, the product line didn't do as well in Popper, so it makes its way through big lots, mm-hmm. then Dollar Tree. 
Well, I tasted a few things that I was wondering if that was the case there. Try the um, lance, if you see them, the lance. Um, you know, the you know, usually have the peanut butter and cheese crackers and things like that. Yeah. Okay. There, it's a buffalo wing and blue cheese. Oh, man. Everybody keeps on trying to me, get me to to try this really hot stuff, and it's just like I, my tolerance for, for heat <laughs> is so low, and everybody's going to go and do that, that brand new burrito or the griller line over at Taco Bell oh. with the, the, you know, the, the jalapeno and the, the ghost pepper, and I'm going, guys, you're okay. trying to kill me. Yeah, no, this is like... Do you want to see a next video? I'm going to die here. Well, okay, I will get, if you've ever had, like, hot sauce in the bottle, just plain old, you know, off-the-shelf Frank's hot yeah. sauce. That's oh, what it I tastes like. Frank's. Oh, that's what it tastes oh. like. Really? <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much Rex hot sauce with, with a blue cheese chase. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wonderful. I hate blue cheese, too. Mmm. Tastes like I... you're like in between somebody's feet. <laughs> it, it does, indeed. It really does. Oh. Uh, real quick here to answer Stranger Than Fiction in the live chat. Uh, yes, dear, Entman's entire line sucks now because they got bought out by a company based out of India, but they did not buy the recipes. They just bought the name. So, so they're just kind of trying to make these recipes up as they go along? Well, they're putting out the same products they always did. They right. have like a 40 product line, but they don't taste anywhere near the same. They taste like crap now. They bought them like three months ago. Oh, kind of like Hostess. Yeah, basically <laughs> like Hostess. Yeah, we'll have a moment of silence for Hostess. And for Entman's. Oh, yeah. I spent all of college living on Entman's. And my main sources of protein were the little food carts that would go back and forth on the streets. Because oh, we were just south of Chicago. Uh-huh. And we were always running down, grabbing stuff off of a food cart, and then going back to class. Oh, holy crap. You would love Portland, Charles. We've got mm -hmm. a, a probably well over 700 food carts now that are stationary. They just park in pods, what's called pods. Mm -hmm. And we just have any kind of food you could think of from any kind of country. And it's just like, you can't go anywhere without seeing food carts. Oh, you're making mm -hmm. me jealous. That's oh, it's wonderful. I mean, we've had to fight to get our little bit of uh, food uh, food trucks here. Because uh -huh. the restaurants were going, if you have the food carts, people won't come to the restaurants. If your oh, food yeah. sucks, people won't come to the restaurants. Sour grapes. <laughs> you know, they're just jealous because the food carts, it costs less to run a food cart. And it costs them all this money. And they mm. probably didn't think of it first. This, but, I mean, the oh, smart yeah. ones go, you know what? I own a restaurant. Let me do a food cart. That's the way Voodoo Donut did here. Is they mm -hmm. own these, these brick and mortar uh, locations. And then they launched a food cart. So now they've got both. they got the best of both worlds. <coughs> a couple places here, like usually the barbecue places that have stable places, they'll also have a food truck. Mm. And then we have this pita place that, um, oh goodness, it's very dangerous to me when they have a food truck. <laughs> See, they're all located on the other side of town, so I can go, oh, I can't go there. I don't need to go there. <laughs> But, yeah, when some truck, but when the food truck's in walking distance, it's like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> then you're in trouble. But speaking of hostess, I noticed in your um, videos, there's always this package of Twinkies. Oh, the, the blue one. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a blue raspberry Twinkie that they offered a while back. And I thought it was so unique that I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to use that kind of like as my little background here. But, I mean, they were horrible. <laughs> it, was, it was like, it be, you know, like Beaker's Lab or something. You're biting into something like that. It was just horrible. They had the strawberry ones at the same time, and they were great. But those blue raspberry ones, man. Just not uh, worth it. No. Nasty. <laughs> So what? So what got you into saying, "Hey, I feel like I can do I want to do reviews on YouTube." <laughs> well, I, I've been doing online marketing since about 2005, and I actually launched mm -hmm. my first YouTube channel in uh, 2006, which was a year after YouTube launched. And that was kind of like I, I really didn't have any idea what I was doing at that time, so I was just throwing videos up there, just uh, just all kinds of subject matter and anything. It was just a big catch-all channel, 
and then I started another couple channels, and and those did okay. But as as I progressed in my marketing, I, I came to learn that you have to, uh, first of all, you have to be passionate about what you do. And second of all, you've got to be very focused on what you do, which was definitely not the first channel that I launched. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I I love fast food and I love to eat and I love to, you know, I love to, I, I thought, you know, there's got, there's going to be more people like me out there. So I mm -hmm. thought, okay, I'm going to launch a, a, a review channel. I had, I had seen a couple others on uh on YouTube, and I thought, this, this is very cool. I think I could do this. I think I could do something good. So I launched that in March of last year, and because it is a focus channel, and I absolutely love what, what I'm doing, when you have a passion for what you're doing, it, it definitely shows through, especially in video, to your viewers. And uh, it's just taken off. It's just done really wonderful. I'm, I'm like uh, at 4,300 subscribers now, and um, and it's doing great. I just love it. It sounds like you've got the market cornered very nicely. So, is there anything, any particular category that you have reviewed that you will never touch again? A category or mm -hmm. or. Or a type of product. Uh, let's see. I think I I swore off IHOP. Uh, <laughs> went to IHOP. I did this one review for a bacon cheddar waffle that they were advertising, and I've come to realize that the truth in advertising for IHOP is kind of non-existent. <laughs> you, you, you watch their their commercials. And they have all these wonderful things. Now, the, the, the case in point is mm -hmm. you watch this commercial for the uh, bacon cheddar waffle, and you've got this, this really plump, big waffle oozing cheese out and bacon bits, and, and people are smiling and laughing and having a good time with this thing. And I'm going, this is pretty good. Now, since they don't allow, places like that don't allow you to, to shoot video inside the establishment, I had to get it to go. So I had gone over there, and first of all, they wanted $6 for this waffle. I had a mm -hmm. real problem with that, but, you know, you know, I, I, sometimes I just got to swallow it, and I got to go, you know, people want to see it, or I think this would be interesting, so I'm just going to grin and bear it. So I paid $6 for this waffle, brought it out to my car, and it was about the size of an Eggo waffle. I cut oh, into it, and there were remnants of a cheese substance in it. I couldn't find any bacon whatsoever, and that was the... That has to be the only review I actually got upset over. I was so mad because it's just like, you know, this was a bait and switch. I was expecting this this waffle from the commercial, mm -hmm. and I got this absolute total dud. And on top of that, I paid $6 for it. So I kind of <laughs> swore off IHOP. I, I, I have a hard time believing their, their smoke and mirrors anymore. Um, as, as a... I wouldn't say frequent visitor of IHOP, but semi regular. Yeah, you're pre you pretty much covered a lot of it. But you know, I know I never get the pancakes or waffles. I get the exact same thing every single time. It's a chicken, chicken and spinach crepe thing. But, oh, there you go. Well, but, yeah. I mean, if it works for you, stick well, with. Well, well. Sometimes the hollandaise sauce is really nice. Sometimes the hollandaise sauce seems like they skimmed off the top and and threw uh -huh. it under a salamander at the last oh, minute. <laughs> There's no consi there's there's no consistency. One thing uh -huh. you can think about well, uh, IHOP, no consistency. <laughs> no, there never is. Well, I take that back. There is one consistent factor on IHOP, and that's every time I have ever eaten at an IHOP, and we're talking well, over the last ten years, four different IHOP locations. So I know it's not just one location. Every time I've eaten at one, the food I've gotten has been frozen in the middle. Oh wow! Did you did you send it back? Every time. Well, good for you. A lot of people would just go, oh, well, this sucks. And oh, pity me. A lot of people <laughs> won't take the initiative and actually go, you know, I paid for this. I, I want what I paid for. Well, there's people and then there's Charlie. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> yes. I'll, be, I'll, I'll be the other person. I will be sitting there eating around the frozen parts. Oh. Uh. 
If need be, I will stand up, start banging my walking stick against the floor until they make it right. There I'll you make go. sure everyone there knows that there is a problem and <laughs> something's wrong. And this is why we don't go out to eat with <laughs> That's why you don't team up and go out to eat. Well, right. well I, I'm very picky about if I go out somewhere to eat with him, I'm very picky what location because I know if his stuff's going to be screwed up, he's going to be himself. <laughs> now, I, don't get me wrong, I'm very polite at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I explain the situation to them, and I say, let's work this out. Uh -huh. But if they blow me off, or they don't fix it, or they say no, that's when I become the Charlie, instead of I just Charlie. That is perfectly legit. <laughs> and the more they blow me off, the more the Charlie I become, because the yeah. more annoyed I get. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I used to be like, I used to be like Skunky was, and then I'm more like... You are, Charlie, but mm -hmm. I usually don't go far enough to cause a scene or anything, but I will go far enough to speak to a manager if it's, if you know, if it's just not good. Oh, I've called district managers before over them not fixing things. In you know, fact, um, oh, go ahead. about a month ago, uh, we were out doing our usual monthly thing with wife and daughter where we go out late in the evening because they want Taco Bell. And I don't eat Taco Bell anymore because my stomach just cannot handle it. Uh -huh. I get Taco Bell and I'm out for three days sick. Oh, no. But our area had just gotten the McDonald's that's open 24 hours. They just started at our McDonald's across the street from the Taco Bell. So they got their Taco Bell and I said, I'm going to go over to McDonald's and get McDonald's. We drove over there, went to the drive-thru because it was drive-thru only. And we placed our order, got up to the window, and they said, oh, it's cash only. Was their machine down? They wouldn't give a reason. I thought, well, that's strange, because they didn't yeah. say that when I placed the order. They waited until we were at the window. Oh, that's not cool. And what I'd ordered should have been about $6 altogether. I'd ordered a single cheeseburger, a chicken snack wrap, and a small orange drink. So it should have been about $6. And here we are at the window, and the kid says, it's cash only. Okay, well, how much is it? Well, it's $9.53. What happened between the window, <laughs> first window and the second window? And Inflation. wife was driving, and she said, well, hold on a minute while we get the cash together. And I said, no, drive on. Drive on. Tell them thanks, but no thanks. We don't have that much cash on us. Let's go. Mm. Well, I got yeah. back home, and the next morning, I called their district manager. Good. And this McDonald's is not one of the franchise McDonald's. This is part of the of the chain McDonald's, the corporate store. Uh -huh. And he said, no, none of our McDonald's are ever cash only. He said, if our registers had gone down so we could not process cards... We have given all the store's instructions to close until the machine comes back up. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I wonder what happened. Oh, he said he was going to go find out because he's district manager. He was going to go find out who was working that night and make sure they don't work there again. Wow. So did you ever find out? Well, a few days later, I heard that where McDonald's is rolling out the nationwide 24-hour thing now. Yeah, October 6th. That they've actually uh, had to release a notice saying that McDonald's is never cash only. And right. please contact corporate if you're ever told it's cash only. I think somebody was pocketing money. That's I know somebody weird. was. <laughs> and it's bad enough y'all have the world's highest freaking um, food fast food tax. Oh, yes, we do. 14%. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. that's, that's nuts. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah, I, I mean, they they wouldn't have gotten anything out of me because I, I just don't ever carry cash. I rarely carry cash. I know. So I can tell you, I don't, I don't like carrying cash because I don't have pockets most of the time. You don't have pockets? No. You are wearing what? pants tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're scaring me here. Nothing to be scared of, Tony. I've not worn oh. pants in ages. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, TMI I mean, there. seriously, I don't wear pants. I wear 
Well, they're called monkey pants. The pair I've got on right now have little turtles all over them, but they don't have oh, pockets hey, in but them. Oh, you do have something on. <laughs> oh, I, I'll, I don't go out indecently. I just don't oh, wear okay. pants. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Okay, I had to clear that up. I, I've got scared. monkey pants. I've got turtle pants. I've got owl pants. I've got psychedelic owl pants. I've got polar bear pants. All Birds, kinds of different they like those things. Big ones that, that people used to wear in the gyms and stuff like that. That was just kind of I don't know what they were called. Uh, kinda similar. More like pajamas. Oh, okay, okay. Sort of like pajama pants with the legs cut off a little shorter. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> About mid calf length. But I don't have pockets, so I don't carry cash, and I really yeah. don't like cash. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just not that convenient for me, especially Ooh. if I'm, you know, the heat's out and I'm wearing shorts and stuff like that. I'd just rather whip up my card and deal with it that way. Well, heck, exactly. Most places, most places now have, you know, that tap and go, so you're, like, even quicker. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never used that. Have you? Um, no. I have one of those cards that has a, the, the RFID, but they don't have the tap. They have where you have to slide it in the slot. So it's done, and then you take it back out. Which, of course, they have these things, and only half of them work. So, mm-hmm. like, I see one in the store, I put it in, they go, oh, no, you can't use that, because I'm like, okay. Then I go to the other store, I go to slide, I go, oh, no, you have to use the thing. It's like, well, y'all, please, all get these together. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> my new card that came in yesterday, and it's on camera right now, but I'm covering up the important bits. Uh, my new card that came in yesterday has that tap thingy on it. Mm-hmm. Well, so, yeah, yeah it's a tap. progress, I guess. I had to refresh your camera. Mine was <laughs> off over here. Yeah, it, they, they, they occasionally. Oh, there we go. Occasionally freeze. Yep. Yeah, my new card has that tap feature on it. I don't know if I'll ever be using it, but it's there. Um, actually, if it's got that thing, you're going to have to use the little slot thing now. You can go to that least favorite store of ours. But oh, it's very evil. <laughs> oh goody <laughs> oh well if I do I do I don't care I've made it this long I'll make it that much longer <laughs> oh, so how responsible do you feel about giving a good review I mean an accurate review because I mean I know I love food, uh, certain foods and people look at me like I've grown a second head uh, <laughs> I well you know it's it's going to be everything ultimately is going to be a matter of taste uh, but I, I feel pretty responsible about it. Um, I will actually do redo a entire review, reshoot something. If mm-hmm. I go home and you go, you know what? I, I really should have, you know, not given as good a review or given a better review um, as far as when I came to my conclusion. Um, so I'll actually go back and do it, or I'll go out and shoot just some B-roll stuff out in my car, and, and you know the magic of editing, um, <laughs> and just give a, a, a different review. Um, mm-hmm. I feel pretty responsible uh, about it, but like I said, of course, everybody's taste is going to be different. You know, there are, are some reviewers that I've watched that that just kind of go, "Yeah, I like this." And I'm going, okay, well, what do you like it about? What do you like about it? What don't you like mm-hmm. about it? How does it taste? And, you know, I want, I have all these questions, and that's why I go, okay, well, if I have all these questions, this is the kind of information I should be putting in my videos because the other people want to know, too. So, <laughs> Especially with the Lay's chip, because everybody and their cousin was doing the Lay's chip things. And most people yeah. are like, oh, this is awful. And that's all. <laughs> Why is it awful? Is it awful because you don't like that flavor in general? Is it awful because it doesn't taste like that flavor? I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give me something to work with here. I did the uh, do us a flavor uh, lace mm-hmm. uh, last year, and I did it again this year. Last year was good. They had some good flavors. Um, this year was was just weird. Um, the 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 one I ended up liking the best was the biscuits and gravy. But I mean, they had a uh, the Greek Town Euro. That was just weird, um, and it was a bummer. Yes, Judy. yes, it was. I what tried the Euro, and it just no. That's not a Euro in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I had no idea what that was supposed to be. Um, 
but you know they, they usually do um, in in each year they do two regular chips they do a wavy chip and they do a kettle cooked chip unfortunately the mm-hmm. hero was the kettle cooked chip so I was really torn because I love that crunch but I just hated the flavor and and then the the New York Reuben was a little bit strange too um, and then what else did they have the truffle fries that was that was real different. I I had never had truffle fries before, so I could not compare it to having a batch of truffle fr- fries on a plate. But I'm, <laughs> I just had to go with it. Those kind of grew on me. When I initially tasted them, I thought, this is just weird. I don't like these. But it was kind of like Napoleon Dynamite. It just grew <laughs> on me. You know, the first time I saw that movie, my, my, my son uh, said, you've got to see this movie. And I watched it through, and after it was over, I looked over him. I said, "What the hell did you just make me watch?" <laughs> and then I then I watched it again, and it just kind of grew on me. And now I own the DVD. I absolutely love it because I'm from Idaho, so so much of of what goes on in that movie is so true to life that it's just funny. That's that's just that's terrible. That's. <laughs> Well, going back to the chips, I've tried the Euro and I've tried the Reuben and did not care for either of them. And I was really disappointed with the Reuben, especially because I like Reubens. I like Euros. So do I. They, yeah. they could have done so much better, but they didn't. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what their problem was. Um, I found that I, I had done a review with the Old Nerd crew, which consists of me, mm-hmm. my son, his friend, and his my son's wife. And we all did... Uh, he, he went over to England for a while and mm-hmm. brought, brought back Walker's chips, which are... Well, they're called crisps over there. But they're equivalent, mm-hmm. the equivalent of the Lay's company. They're actually owned by the same people. And the Walker's people, they know how to do meat type uh, crisps right. I mm-hmm. mean, it, it, they are so spot on, it's uncanny. Uh, but Lay's really flails with that. Um, the, the, <laughs> the, I, I ended up being a big fan of the Wasabi Ginger um, winner last year. And those are still on the shelf, and I can get them you know, whenever I want them. But those were just so good. And, and that's the only kind of heat I can really do is the heat that burns your nose and not your tongue. You know, mm-hmm. stuff like the, the Asian mustard and, and stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. Horseradish, which is basically what wasabi is. But, right. um, the, you know, the stuff that burns your tongue is just like, what? I, I, that doesn't compute in my brain. It's just like you're going to go out and you're going to spend money on something that's going to make you totally uncomfortable. Are you a yep. masochist? What is your problem? I don't understand mm-hmm. this. And all these people are bringing out all these products that, you know, heat, heat, ghost pepper and jalapeno and all this other stuff. And it's just like, okay, I am sick of this. I want everybody to bring out products with nothing but bacon in them. Nothing but bacon now. I'm a bacon fan. I'm not a heat <laughs> fan. So put bacon in everything. Well, I'm a, I like heat, but I don't. I, it has to be heat and flavor. I mean, it's got to have some fruitiness or something. I don't like heat for heat's sake, or as I call it, testosterone hot. Uh-huh. Well, the only reason you're eating it is because you're trying to prove that you're so much more masculine, manly than the other person, not because yeah. it actually mm-hmm. tastes like anything. Yeah. And, Which is and why, yeah. I've, why I've avoided the whole ghost pepper thing. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, we had a food cart down here. Um, that uh, one of the things they served was a sandwich with ghost pepper. But they they had this ghost pepper powder that they had. And as a dare <laughs> one night, I had a friend who has done a couple reviews with me who um, actually we, we said, okay, I, I want to see you eat this stuff. So he took a little container of ghost pepper powder and downed it. And it got stuck on the back of his throat, and we thought he was going to die. It was, and I got it on video. I've got it on my other channel, <laughs> and it's just like he, he was shaking for like two hours afterwards. And it's just like I thought I was going to have to, you know, take him to the hospital. But I mean, it was it was nuts. And I'm going, 
why would anybody do this? This is insane. Yeah, it's that adrenaline. I think it's that adrenaline wrench because sometimes if, it's, if it is extremely hot, it does kind of kick in the adrenaline thing. Oh. I haven't got to that hot. I'm not planning on getting to that hot. <laughs> I mean, I like I like spicy, but no. <laughs> I I don't do that either. I'm not a big fan of spicy hot. Mm. So we're all in the same boat. Yeah. So if we oh, get yes. together and do a review, sometimes we won't be doing ghost pepper no. crap. Sriracha is different. Sriracha is different. Yeah, that's oh, that's, yes. uh, that's pretty decent. Particularly sriracha mayonnaise, because there's got that little bit of mayonnaise that's a little bit of cool, so you have the more of the the flavor of the chilies and less of the heat of the chili. That sounds good. I like now, myself. I'm a big fan of the sriracha vodka by UV because it's not hot at all. It has a spice note to it, but it's not burning hot. Well, even the um, jalapeno moonshine we got wasn't wasn't true. True. It had all the fruitiness. Yes, we have jalapeno flavored moonshine. Legal. Oh, jeez! It's legal. Um, <laughs> all right. See, so you review food, we review alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, I noticed but, that. But, but it actually is pretty good. It, there's a little bit of spice, but it's more of that, after you drink it, you're kind of going, hey. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's an after, but it's really, has a, you really taste the fruitiness of a jalapeno. You actually, actually feel, because it's using fresh as opposed to pickles. So you actually get the flavor of what a jalapeno tastes like, besides just, hi, I'm heat. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, and that makes it so much better. And it goes well with Bloody Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Taco Bell had this one thing that my my son absolutely loves, and I tried it. It was just, to me, it was just like pure heat. It was just mm-hmm. like I couldn't taste the, the shredded chicken. I couldn't taste the cheese. I could just, it was just like somebody stuck a, a, a coal in my mouth. Mm-hmm. And it's just like I don't like this. This is horrible. <laughs> and you know when it, when I do reviews like that, it, I feel like I'm ripping people off because I, I you know, it, I'm torn between giving them a review based on what it's supposed to be as opposed to how I'm tasting it. And I don't do the hot, and that's why I I, I really don't like to do hot stuff for people because. I have a very low tolerance for it, and I would rather give it a, you know, go, yeah, this tastes great, and it's, you know, it's a solid, I like it, rather than a, you know, this thing sucks because I absolutely cannot stand the heat. We watch, because we watch way too many YouTube videos, we watch, there's <laughs> another one reviewer, and she hates licorice, she can't, can't do licorice. And I swear, if people can send her licorice, they will send her licorice. Oh. <laughs> like, she has gone through different countries of licorice. Different, but it's like every time she's like, and I have licorice. <laughs> like, now, is this all licorice or just a, a certain flavor of licorice? She no. literally cannot stand any licorice. But they, they, and they always send her like a box of different foods, and always included in there is a piece is of licorice. licorice. <laughs> a piece of licorice mm-hmm. in there. But <laughs> well, she's a real trooper. She will try it, and you can notice her eyes. Her eyes are nice <laughs> express a part of her face. <laughs> and you can notice her eyes when she eats licorice. She goes, yeah, that's licorice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder, it makes me wonder if she's like me. I eat by texture a lot. Yeah. Like, I, you mm-hmm. know, I love banana flavored slurpees but you can't get me to eat a banana because it's mushy in my mouth i i hate the texture of it so i'm wondering if you know because if it's just all licorice i wonder if it's the texture that bothers her well she had a licorice lollipop one time so i think it's the flavor i think it's really the, yeah i can't i can i cannot stand licorice i uh well it's not gonna do the strawberry kind but the anise oh <laughs> Yeah, well, we I watched her with licorice. all different forms of licorice, and she just, every one of them she could not stand. She gets that same look on her face, and you know she just hates it. But the poor little girl, she's so sweet and innocent and kind, she never says a bad thing about anything that she's reviewing. Well, so that one thing, she said that one thing was horrible, and you knew it was horrible because she said <laughs> I'm she kidding. said it was horrible. You could tell on her face it was horrible. She said, but someone out there probably likes it. 
<laughs> she did. She did clarify it with that. I was talking about the American version of popping cookie. She yeah, just, she called that disgusting. Oh, but she bit. did say someone would like it. Little Big Orc in the uh, live chat says, "Cluck you nine one one." has a sign-off form for their hottest chicken wings. Oh, uh, you wouldn't no. catch me there. No, no. If I got a sign-off, well, nowadays. Because used to be, there was a time where Waffle House used to make you sign off if you wanted your eggs up or your or your steak rare. Huh? There was steak rare. Because up. Cause, 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 um, cause there were Because technically eggs up is kind of raw. It's not cooked all the way through eggs. Oh, okay. And yeah, When I worked at they, Reno's, that was part of my job was to bring out the legal waiver form for a customer to sign for that. Yeah, I think for like about a 10 year period here, it seemed like they always made you sign it. They don't do it anymore, but they used to have to trial out the the, the paper every work time you ordered a rare steak or eggs up. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. <laughs> and it's like, and then you started going, what's wrong with this meat? <laughs> well, so Reno that? still requires that. It's a, it's a legal cover your ass kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I guess it was because of Mad Cow, maybe? I don't know. So is that is that Cluck You Nine One One? Is that a place I've never heard of it? Um, it's probably I'm guessing. Orc, is it in? Is it in? Baltimore? Or is it called just Cluck You? I, I don't know. Well, let's we'll find see. out. It is called Cluck You. It's a chicken restaurant. Cluck You Chicken, home of the Nine One One sauce. Oh, the Nine One One sauce is the the Nine One One is the sauce name. <laughs> okay, so where where are they located? Well, I just pasted a link to them in the live chat. Oh, let's see. Where are their locations? Baltimore. Oh, they're in Florida, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland here in the U.S. Oh, okay. And they have a location in Lebanon. Here? Okay. No, so not here, dear. Lebanon, coast. the country. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's yeah, they're, they're East Coast, pretty much. Entirely East Coast. Oh, kind of like in and out Burger can't seem to find its way across the Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> and how Carl's Jr. becomes suddenly becomes Hardee's here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I remember the first time I ever ate at a Hardee's. We, uh, like you said, over here they're Carl's Jr., but I was in Wyoming, I believe. And I ate at a Hardee's there, and they had buffalo burgers. And I had never had buffalo before, and I absolutely fell in love with it. That meat is so lean and so juicy, and it's just like, oh, this is this is wonderful. And um, mm-hmm. unfortunately, they don't have it over here. I mean, occasionally I'll be able to go to to one of the stores, and they'll be offering buffalo, but they don't like serve it on a regular basis or at all that I know of in any of the fast food places. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. no there's buffalo only in in the grocery store. <laughs> Mm, well, yeah. and, some, and some highfalutin restaurants, but they want to mm-hmm. charge you in stu- stupid prices for it. Oh, that's good stuff. I've learned it's easier for me to go to my local butcher than it is to go to a restaurant and get certain kind of meats. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I've been like, going around for weeks and weeks now just trying to find a nice, simple skirt steak. Oh, you and that skirt steak. <laughs> it's like the, he's like, it's like been going on the search for the Holy Grail. <laughs> hey, you know, some things are just like, oh, it's up there, and you just gotta, I gotta have it every once in a while. That's that's kind of like me and and KFC hot wings. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 that's a dry heat that I can handle, but I am absolutely addicted to KFC hot wings. <laughs> um, it and it's funny because they had a uh, they had a contest a while back, um, mm-hmm. and I it, it was snowing around here rare snow around here and I actually walked to KFC because it was too slick to drive to get my hot wings and I thought you know what this would make a fab video just off the mm-hmm. cuff and I did this little 30 second video of what I would go through to get my KFC hot wings and I, I did a b-roll shot of the snow outside and they loved it and to this day it is on on their KFC, uh, it's it's on their hot wing page of KFC.com. <laughs> My video is there, so if you ever mm-hmm. want to go over and see that, it's it's really funny. But they just absolutely <laughs> loved it. Sent me a T-shirt and a uh, hundred dollar gift card. Wow. Yeah, see? and it was just off the cuff type thing. <laughs> it's just thing is people try, if people try to create celeb quote unquote celebrity or quote unquote a great film, and sometimes the best thing is when you just. Say hey, let's film 
I got my camera, might as well film it. Absolutely. And you, you never know because it's just like some of the things that I would plan out and, and go to great lengths in order to produce just fell flat. Uh, but like, for instance, this one video on my main channel I shot, um, my daughter-in-law makes these ramen noodles, these crispy ramen noodles. And they, they don't have the broth with them, and you do them in a pan, mm -hmm. and they're crispy, and, and they're so delicious. And so one night, my, I asked my wife if she would make them for me because I, you know, I'll, I'll burn water. And I'm yeah. going, will you make this for me? So she was making up my ramen noodles, and I said, wait, let me go ahead and grab my camera. And so I shot her doing this recipe for these crispy ramen noodles, and that video went through the roof and to this day it's still so popular so many comments of people going oh i gotta try this and and what's fun is i take their comments you, you know you kind of gotta market this thing in your mind and so they started commenting and say you know what would would make this even better this this and this and this and i'm going you know what they're giving me content in their comments <laughs> i'm going there's mm -hmm. content for another video they just gave me a recipe. So, you know, then I started doing that, but nothing has surpassed that just that just single, let's grab the camera and shoot it. And it's, it's just been nuts. Yes, we, well, we do. Ours are a little more structured than that because we actually wear our costumes and things, the things that we normally wear when we're out on events. But when we shoot video, we're wearing those. I'm wearing my bartending outfit. She's wearing a cocktail gown and everything. But we really don't plan out the drinks that we shoot on our videos that often. Mm -hmm. Like currently, our number one video is the Boozy Bears, which is gummy bears soaked in alcohol. Oh, wow. <laughs> I have a friend that would probably love that. Mm -hmm. He's a gummy and bear addict. As far as we can tell, we're the first ones to actually put the video out with the exact recipe that gives you the good ones that are still a little firm. They're not dripping with alcohol. They're not burning your throat up when you eat one. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're there. You can make them, take them out of the fridge when they're done, throw them in a bag and take them with you to a party and eat them. Mm -hmm. Everyone else either drowns them to where they're squishy, mushy, or they don't put enough alcohol in them so you can't even tell it's there. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's the best kind of videos you can put out. You know, videos, mm -hmm. there, there's elements of videos, there are four elements of a good video. Does it entertain, educate, no, three, I'm sorry, <laughs> educate, entertain, and engage? If you can get those three elements in a video, you've got gold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because those how-to videos are, you know, those are really popular. There are people out there who want to know how to do all kinds of stuff. When when I started, one, one of the things that I do, uh, my marketing you know, I work from home because my marketing has allowed me to do that. But it, uh, because of that, one of the things that's allowed me to do is work as a background actor. So there's a lot of television productions mm -hmm. and movies being shot around Portland area here. So I've worked in Leverage and Grimm and uh, the, the librarians now. It's so jealous. <laughs> I love Grim. <laughs> yeah. It, it, and I needed to know, I, I was a businessman. I was supposed to be a businessman in this one episode. But I had no clue how to tie a tie. So I went to YouTube. How, mm -hmm. how, to, how to tie a tie. And that's how I learned how to tie a tie. And it was so simple. Such a simple little video. But mm -hmm. it, it changed how, you know, it allowed me to be able to tie a tie. So I was absolutely thrilled. That was golden to me. Well, I, I think that a lot of things that people, there's two things. One is that schools don't, because of, don't even get me started on why schools don't. But, you know, there's no home ec anymore. There's, oh, you know, a, there's not. Baby is gone. And baby, you know, all the basic knowledge things. And then you get to an adult and everybody's like, well, you should already know how to do this. So I'm not going to teach you. Uh -huh. And then they don't yeah. want to go ask somebody because they're embarrassed. But nobody's watching when you're on watching a YouTube video. Well, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> when, when you learn to do something, it's not through osmosis. You need to be mm. taught how to do it and shown how to do it. And if you know, if, if you're not shown, how are you supposed to know? Exactly. Uh, going back to the video we do before the Boozy Bears, our number one video, which it's it's starting to edge back up there. They're about neck and neck right now, actually. 
but the one before the Boozy Bears that was so popular and is still the most watched on our metrics is how to make simple syrup. And all simple syrup is, a lot of bartenders use it, a lot of cooks use simple syrup. It's mm -hmm. equal parts white sugar and water. You mix them together, boil them to where the sugar melts down and becomes a liquid, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You throw it in a squirt bottle after it cools. People are nuts about finding out how to make that. So many people have commented on that video saying, finally, a video I can follow on how to make simple syrups. I don't got to go out and pay $12 a bottle. There you go. It, it's just something simple like that. And we, mm -hmm. thought, we thought, okay, we'll do this one because we wanted to see how, if we added in some cooking thing. Because, you know, uh -huh. we're like, you know, we'll just throw this video up there. Seriously, it's our best video. Seriously, it's in quadruple, you know, it's four digits of people watching this video. Really? Simple stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely doesn't surprise me. It, it's just how-to stuff. Somebody had, um, you know, I do product reviews, usually nerdy mm -hmm. product reviews, but sometimes somebody will send me something that, that I'll do because I like kitchen gadgets. I just go nuts. You know, you put me into a bed, bath, and beyond or something <laughs> like that, and it's just like, ooh, the, the nirvana of stores. Yep. So, um, somebody had sent me a French press to do and I had never, I, I'm a coffee fanatic, and uh, but I can't make a, a pot of coffee to save my life. It's the blight of my existence. So um, they, I, I ended up with a Keurig, a single cup coffee maker, because, you know, it's like a no-brainer. You throw a pot in there, and there's your cup of coffee. But there are times that I, I, I'm working, and I just want four or five cups of coffee at the same time. I don't want to have to keep on going over to the Keurig. So somebody sent me a French press, and I had never heard, or I, I had heard of French presses, but I had never mm -hmm. made coffee in one before. I learned how to make coffee in this thing and fell in love with it. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to double up. I'm going to make a how-to video for people on how to make French press coffee. But at the same time, I'm going to be promoting their product. So it, it was kind of like a product placement in a how-to video. And it worked mm -hmm. out really well. And, you know, just just the fact that I can I, I just swear by French press coffee anymore. The passion came through. The, the educational thing was there. And, it, and the, the people who, you know, sent me the French press just absolutely loved it because, you know, it was promoting their, their product. And it was, mm -hmm. like you said, it was very educational and entertaining because neither one of us can, you know, drink coffee. I can't stand it. He can't have it. Um, <laughs> but it was, the, it was, we watched the whole video. Because it was still it was still interesting. Plus, we're both kind of well. I'm I'm the, the learning geek. I love. Uh -huh. I, I always say I'm am a dork because I I am fascinated by stuff I don't understand. <laughs> oh, that's that's <laughs> awesome. There's nothing dorky about that. That's that's wonderful. Yeah. So you know, we watched it and turned, and as I said, sometimes even if you're not going to use that knowledge, you learn it for later. Because who knows? I'm. I may end up somewhere where, oh my goodness, we need coffee. There's a French mm -hmm. press. Anybody knows how to use it? I know how to use a French press. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't and drink, but I watch videos. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It, it's really simple. And, you know, I, I tell my wife, my wife will come up and she'll go, I don't understand. How, how do you think I should do this? You know, it, it just with various things. And I'll go, have you gone to YouTube? <laughs> no, I didn't think of that. I, I said, you know, so go to YouTube because, you know, YouTube is the second largest uh, uh, search engine next to Google. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both owned by Google. But, you know, for people like me who learn by doing and watching people do, you know, if if, if I read something in a book, it I could read it four or five times over and I won't get it. But if you show me how to do it or give me an example or exactly. tell me a story, I got it. Yeah, so oh. you know, I, I sent her to YouTube and she's always going, oh, now I know how to do this. Oh, no, now I know how this works. I've seen it time and again. If there's anything you need to know how to do, go to YouTube first. Someone has made a video on exactly how to do it. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um. You do call it old nerd review. So, what are you? Are you a nerd about a specific thing? Or are you just kind of nerdy in general? <laughs> I'm just kind of nerdy in general. Um, you know, I in in high school I wasn't with the jocks. I wasn't with the socias. 
I hung out in a small group of people who who genuinely cared about each other and were you know weren't trying to to climb this social ladder by you mm-hmm. know showing off and, and you know all this other stuff I wasn't a sports guy um, I, I grew up doing computers you know I absolutely love computers I love sci-fi I love to read um, you know all this it, it, you know I can quote movies you know all this stuff that that are stereotypical of nerd that, that's me you know except for the pocket protector don't have one of those but you know <laughs> Over and above that, it, it, I love nerdy stuff, and you know it, it's just like you can throw me anything. If I was on video, um, I would show you this thing that that uh, my my wife's friend bought me at Walgreens, which is a drugstore over here. I love Minions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate the Smurfs with a passion, but I absolutely love Minions. And it's this little fan that has candy in the base and you push the little button that says try me and he's on this little thing that's i don't know it looks like a gear with a little fan on it and he's riding it and you push that little thing and the propeller goes around and i'm absolutely in love with this thing and it's the geekiest mm-hmm. thing in the world but you know it's just fun and, and I don't care what people think of me. And, and most people, you know, most people are just afraid to be who they are. And, and they, would, they would love it too, or, or they would love some of the things that I love, but they're just too afraid of what other people's opinions are in order to actually admit it. <laughs> and I gave up worrying what other people thought a long time ago, and I've been much better off since then. Well, you well, I think that comes with age. You know, as you get older, you care less and less about what people think. I'll go, you know, I'll go a two days without a shower, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because I remember when you were doing the uh, review of the um, antenna, which I may have to take you up on because our antenna sucks. Uh, it's one of those you get up and the, TV, the station goes away. If you step oh. over to the side, the station goes away. If it rains, the station the station comes back. But if it's windy, you get these four stations. But if it if it's sunny, it, you don't. Get these oh four. wow, that but would we, drive me nuts. We bought it when it first, when we first switched when everything first switched over to DTV. So I'm thinking it is a generational one. It just needs to be replaced. Mm-hmm. But you were mentioning me TV as the reason why the, the thing you like the best. Oh yeah. ATV and Antenna TV just showed the classic shows. I, I love that stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. The, our what's the dinner is like emergency. Then um, at yeah, two things of emergency or Adam Twelve. Then when it switches to chips, I got to change over because I can't stand chips. So, <laughs> so, so we switched to game show. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like when Saturday evening hits at 7 p.m. over here, I've got to turn Batman on. Got to yeah. watch Batman. Yeah. But, you know, stuff like that. And, and you know, I, I found that antenna through um, a store called Fred Meyer over here um, it, because I had gotten rid of TV like years ago because it was just getting too expensive. You pay like $100 a month and or more, and you get 200 mm-hmm. channels and, like, 195 of those are total fluff and and just throwaway channels, you know, home shopping network stuff. And then there's like a few channels that you like and because they won't deregulate it, you don't have a buffet. You can't say, I want this channel, this channel, this channel, and this is what I'll pay. You know, if, if mm-hmm. cable companies would go, you know, we'll charge you a monthly fee for five channels of your choice. I would absolutely love that because there's only a few, a handful of channels that I'll watch. I see Most sci-fi, people, science, the learning channel, food and <laughs> Yeah, there you go. And so I'm going, uh, you know, there, there's, uh, uh, when I first found out about MeTV, it was online. And I'm going... I would absolutely love this channel. How can I get this channel? And I found this antenna, this clear TV antenna over at Fred Meyer for $15. And Mm -hmm. they boasted that you could plug it into your TV on the back and it would go out and grab the towers within the uh, 35 mile radius. It would pull them in and you could get HD, you know, the ones that broadcast in HD uh, channels. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll try it. If it works, I'm going to use it as a product review. If it doesn't, I'll just take it back and get my money back. So I plugged that sucker in. 
set it inside my house and did a scan and it pulled in 20 channels and all the HD broadcasting channels it pulled in and two of the channels were me TV and antenna TV so I, I was just absolutely thrilled with, with that so I made the video about it and then I thought you know I, I want to see how the other ten antennas uh, you know uh, if they're just as good. So I found these Am this Amazon antenna that was the mm -hmm. same thing, only it had a 50-mile radius, and it had this booster on it that was supposed to boost your signal. <laughs> so I, I sent away for that, and that was like 49 bucks. I get this thing, I plug it in, and I could not find a location for to, to get anything more than what I was getting. It was pulling in 29 channels, um, but nine of those channels it wasn't pulling the signal in enough to see them mm -hmm. i could hear them but i couldn't see them right. and so you know i i'm going and this was with the the signal booster on at a 50 mile radius and it didn't do any better than the clear tv in fact it did worse <laughs> because i kept on having to to move it in order to get it, it to pull in anything so I made a video review on that, and I said, you know, guys, if, if you're looking for something like this, I, I wouldn't recommend the Amazon one because it just doesn't do as good as a $15. And, and that's one thing I always want to do is one reason I always give the prices is because I want to give people a good value because people are on budgets. And if I can give people a good value, and, and, and I'll even rank something down because it's overpriced. Um, that's what I want to do. Like I did this McDonald's buttermilk chicken fillet that they have right now, and they it was okay, but they wanted like four dollars and ninety nine cents for this yeah, thing. No. And, you're going, <laughs> and I'm going, you know, the review before I went over to Popeyes and I got their bona fide chicken meal for five bucks, and it gave me two sides that they usually charge two and a half bucks a piece for, plus three tenders or two pieces of chicken. And a biscuit. And I'm going, why would people spend five bucks for a burger? This is just not good. You know, give me a massage and a cup of coffee along with that because I, I can't <laughs> see spending money like that. Yeah, because I was looking at it and going, oh, this looks good. And they replaced my, fav my other favorite chicken. And then that's all the price. And I said, you know, for that price, I can get two of the chicken that I go get, which is the uh, rallies slash checkers, depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. um, deluxe chicken sandwich. It's two for five. I can get there you uh, go. for five bucks. I can get that that a fry and a and a, and a vat of soda because they apparently don't seem to make small sodas there. I see. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> you get the small. I'm like this is the small. What I hate to see what the large is. <laughs> yeah, that's the way Popeyes is. They have these these. I, I think they call them mediums, and they're just humongous. I'm going, wow, you know, I, I usually, like I said, I usually go where the bargains are. So if I'm going to get a large Coke or I'm going to get a large coffee, I always head over McDonald's because the one over here is you can get a large for a buck, mm -hmm. you know, whereas you go to any of the fast food places and they want, you know, for the same mm -hmm. size, they want like two bucks and stuff. And I'm going, I'm not, you know, I'm not dumb. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I, I eat the large sweet tea at Nick McDonald's, which is like mm -hmm. that, that of tea. And it's actually sweet tea, not sweetened tea. Right. I'm from the South. We don't do sweetened tea. <laughs> That's when they put sugar in it after they've made it, as opposed to putting <laughs> sugar in it while it's boiling. Uh, yeah. and there's a different flavor. <laughs> That's a Southern thing. Uh, the other day, I was actually at a restaurant with wife and daughter. I think it was a Dairy Queen. And I'd ordered a drink there, and I said, just give me a medium. Not knowing that a medium to them is a 48-ounce cup. Oh, wow. Good. Yeah. So what's a large, 64? A large is 64, and there's an 18-cent difference between the two. Wow. It's, it's, that's like, it, you get the large and share it or yeah. something. You can't even fit yeah. in the cup holders nowadays. Oh. No, it did not no. fit in the cup holders at all in the car. And I was, <laughs> I was stunned by it. I'm like... I wanted a medium. That is a medium. Okay, show me a large. And the girl held up the large cup with both hands. And I'm like, oh, good fucking Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the large is only 18 cents more. I said, no, no, no. Show yeah. me a small. We don't have wow. a small. All we have is a child size. Okay, what's a child size? 28 ounces. So that's a regular. That's a regular every place else, right? Yeah, that is way too much liquid. 
Wow. You know, I'm not all Mayor Bloomberg about this, but seriously, some of us just want a small but, drink. Yeah, who the hell is going to give a child 28 ounces of drink? No, Somebody I, should stop planning on sleeping that afternoon. That's right. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, I used to get these jugs. I used to actually buy these 64-ounce jugs, and I used to fill mm -hmm. it up with pop, and I'd sit and drink it at a sitting. I can't do that anymore, you know. Mm -mm. If it's 7-Up or something, I can, but Coke just, just bothers my stomach anymore. And I, I'm a Coke fanatic. I absolutely love it, but it doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> I don't drink anything like that anymore. Nowadays, I drink fruit juices, um, milk, uh a little bit of alcohol, of course, but that's about it. <laughs> well, you're Listen a better man her. than me, Gunga Din, because I, you know, I just, you know, I have the palate of an eight-year-old. And well, you know, oh, oh, uh, oh, he has a palate of an eight-year-old. Allergies will do that to you because the sodium benzoate and caffeine and a lot of drinks like that, I cannot have at all. It does really bad things to me. Yeah. Uh -oh. And it, you always remember that kind of stuff too. You, you get, mm -hmm. you know, it, it. I always, that always is something that I, my goes to immediately to my mind. It's just like you know what? If you get this, you're gonna love it for a second, and that's mm -hmm. it. And then you're gonna be miserable. So it's just like oh, it's gonna yeah, start burning. It's gonna start blistering, and then where are you gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's bad. Mm-hmm. Oh well. Stranger said. Made. Stranger said alcohol is fruit juice. So what if it's distilled? Exactly. <laughs> Stranger knows. <laughs> She's a very smart woman out there. She knows exactly how <laughs> how fruit juice is, and I enjoy drinking my fruit juice. I don't yeah. drink water though. Yeah. I was going to say, but the title of an eight year old. Two words, Charlie. What? Devil's food cookies. Oh Ooh, God, go. yes. Uh, the off brand of the snack wheels. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, you open a box of those near me and they're gone. Pretty good, huh? As soon as you get the box open and open me in a wrapper, they're just gone. They just <laughs> evaporate in my presence. What are they? A snack wheel, but they're an off-brand. They're actually available at Dollar Tree. And they're the Devil's Food Fudge Coated. Okay, I am adding this of my list to things to review. Devil's They food. come in a green and brown box, and oh my god, you've got to try them. Okay, I, I I will do that review and I'll dedicate it to you. the The actual snack wheel brand is like four dollars a box. Uh huh. Which is so the Dollar Tree it. brand is really worth getting. <laughs> so so is it? It's is it the same size box as the $4 same size box? box uh, the cookies are the same size. I have actually bought a box of each and compared them side by side. They're identical. Oh, well, yeah, so so you're just paying for a brand name or something like that. Or That's just, all it is. It's the name. Wow. Because Snackwell used to be associated with healthy. <laughs> Snackwell, Snackwell was healthy, huh? Uh, how's that work? Um, they usually were smaller portions. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're from fact, Nabisco, so compared to, yeah, Keebler fudge rounds and stuff like that, they are healthy <laughs> <laughs> so compared to this thing with four billion calories and sodium up the yinger and stuff like that, mm -hmm. this is healthy. Mm -hmm. That's called rationalization. Love okay, it. Here, I <laughs> have found a copy. I found a picture of the Snackwheels brand, and the Dollar Tree ones look identical. They just don't say Nabisco or Snackwheels on them. Uh huh. So there's a picture of it for you. That'll show you exactly what to look for. Okay, let me get my chat up here. Oh yeah, they're fat free. So is a lot. So yeah, a sure Apple's they are. Food cake cookies. Okay, well, I'm gonna save that image too, so I remember. All candy is fat free. It's the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> See, you gotta think when they say it's free of something, you gotta figure out what are they replacing it with. Most, right. Most fat, because like I detest fat free. Things like um, cream cheese or yogurt because they replace it with a ton of sugar. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> it's no fat. We'll just fill all that. You know, it's got to weigh the same thing, so we'll just put it in with sugar or fake sugar. Uh, six of yep. one, half dozen of the other. Yeah. <laughs> but some things like these, especially, it's worth it. I don't care what's in them. I'll just eat every box of them I can. Oh, well, yeah, those look good. I'm going to have to try those. Watch oh, they're very now. good. 
and they're done by snack wells because this is mm-hmm. Nabisco on it. But nab- snack wells are Nabisco, right? Yeah, snack wells right. is from Nabisco. Okay, but the Dollar Tree version, they call them oh, uh, what D lights or something like that. Something. <laughs> oh, D light. Okay, well, I'll put that. In I always love playing that. What the real name is? Mm-hmm. You know, frost, frosted. You know. Fruit frosted o- O's, which is really just um, fruit. Milk. Yep. <laughs> I don't want to get sued. <laughs> but honestly, a lot of the stuff like that, even though it's not the same name brand, it's made in the exact same factory. It comes off the same production lines. So you just put it in a different package. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a Pontiac vibe that comes off the Toyota uh, <laughs> car line. And mm-hmm. I, it's it's a 2004, and the only thing I've had to do is change a serpentine. It had a serpentine belt changed on it, and that's the only mm-hmm. thing I've ever had to do to that car. It is run like a champ. It runs like a Toyota. It looks exactly like a Toyota equivalent. It just has like a Pontiac sticker on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the, yeah. the Ford Festivas all came with Honda engines, mm-hmm. and for some reason, metric tires. But that's a different. Metric lug neck tires. Found that out one night when when tire tire blew and uh, everybody had American lug wrenches, including the AAA guy who came to try to. <laughs> oh well, that didn't work out. But he did have fix a flat flat flat. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's try that again. Fix a flat, which did get us at least to the repair station. <laughs> but it was like so that just built the tire until you could get. Yeah, it, it basically is putting you know spray foam. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay. It, you can See, I don't know this kind of stuff. As a nerd, I don't know. I, I can't fix a car. Yeah, I can't yeah. change my own oil. I discovered fix a flat that night. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like magic. Yeah. It's like you can drive apparently like 30 miles on it, and that's about it. Well, <laughs> it's get you to the station. That's all the purpose. It's all <laughs> fix a flat is is great stuff with a different label on the can. Great stuff. That's great stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what great stuff is. The stuff you used to fill cracks and holes with. Oh, the, the, the expandable caulking? Yeah, the expanding oh, okay. foam. That's all it is. <laughs> so they just put a different name on it and charge the bigger price. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? It's the exact same stuff. It comes out the same way. It does the same thing. Explains why it doesn't work for certain miles, because I'm thinking constant pressure on that's going to flatten it back then. Oh, it should. does. It does. But as small as a festiva, if I if I had four brawny guys, they probably could have walked it to me. Do another swirl on the motor, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, another one of the things you do besides besides doing um, your show is your Friday night um, hangouts with the with, what do you refer to the crony community? Yeah, uh, my everybody has their name for their little clique of viewers, and mine is the old nerd crony community. And right. yeah, I, I've been doing these old nerd Friday night through Hangouts. It started out on Periscope, um, but I mean, when when it comes to comments from viewers, those things come up mm-hmm. and then they disappear. And if you know, it's a mobile uh, platform, and these old eyes can't see that. You know, they, I just cannot see it, and especially in time, because it, it'll come up and then go away. So I'm going, I've got to find a different platform. So I started doing Hangouts, and I'm actually thinking of looking into doing Blab now, which is a brand new, uh, hmm. a, a brand new platform where people can do video conferencing with up to four people. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll try that because it's just a little bit different. Um, you know, it's a brand new platform, so I'm not expecting, right. you know, right. no miracles out of it right out of the shoot. But I, I you know, I, I'm always up for trying new toys. I just absolutely love new toys. <laughs> oh, we all do, believe me. Well, see, I usually go, let's try this, and Charlie looks at me and goes, you know how much programming I'm gonna have to do on the back end for that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> yeah, and, and you're, you know, you're probably like me. You're a right brain thinker. You know, you think up here in the clouds, mm-hmm. and you're, you know, all kinds of ideas and fun stuff, and <laughs> and then you you tell it to a left brain thinker, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's a partner, and it's just like they squash all your dreams in one 
sitting and they go, I don't think it's going to work and that's going to cost too much money. Or I don't want to hear that. I want to play. Now, <laughs> I don't squash all of her ideas. Yeah. In fact, I usually run with more ideas that she hadn't come up with. Nice. She gets me started and I just take off with them. That's nice. That's a nice working relationship when you guys play off each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's a programmer, so I'm always thinking of adding stuff to the site, and you know, because I ain't got to do all the back end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some things that look real good and shiny and new, and just like a cat batting around some thread. But mm-hmm. you know, on the back end, it's just like a disaster. Oh yes, yes, it is. As a perfect example of that, uh, (laughs) the studio where we film our cocktail videos and everything, for ages now we've had a camera straight across from the bar set up that we have. Mm -hmm. And just this week we got the parts in to add a B-roll camera overlooking the bar. Mm -hmm. Just like cooking shows used to do. So you can actually see us mix the drink straight down, same viewpoint we have. Because it's That's sweet. Handing this, holding the cell phone. Because I, um, let's see, I did one whole thing with the cell phone upside down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I and distract. then another one where the cell phone wasn't actually pointed at me mixing the drink; it was pointed at an empty spot on the bar. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was what you, I was looking at what you were doing. <laughs> so right, she was looking at me. She wasn't looking on the screen at me. She was just looking at me. <laughs> So are you going to try the um, uh, new YouTube live streaming with that? Because with the encoder and stuff like that, you can shoot with dual cameras and, and do something pretty cool. We may do that. We're actually planning on adding a third camera to the studio because our primary camera doesn't connect online at all. It's just a bog standard video camera cord straight to an SD card. Oh, okay, okay. Our B-roll camera is a high-res webcam, and if it works, we'll be getting another high-res webcam to put out there. It'll be next to the A-roll camera, so we can actually broadcast live. Good. Nice. Well, that's fun. I mean, live broadcasting is so much fun. I Mm -hmm. I just have such a good time with the old nerd Friday night, um, because it's just just off the cuff and off, you know... Mm -hmm. It's just, you're interacting with people, and I love to interact with my viewers. I just don't like to put videos out there and and watch comments be made and not comment back. I I love to interact with them because it it puts flesh on you, and and people like that. They like to see that you're a real person, that you're just not some untouchable entity uh, Mm -hmm. putting out this stuff for them. We get that. (laughs) Yeah, it is just like the, the you want to be touchable. Uh, you you want mm-hmm. people to to feel comfortable enough that they'll talk to you. And and you know it, it's a rarity anymore because I remember one of the first few videos that I shot, and somebody asked me a question and I answered them and it totally freaked them out. <laughs> That I would actually answer them. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's just like, I don't understand why this is freaking you out. Doesn't everybody, you know, well, kind of interact and talk back? And, and they don't. Some of the, I think there's a whole class of YouTubers that are in it for the subscribers. Not, mm-hmm. not for the subscribers as people, but the amount of subscribers they can get. Mm-hmm. When you got they want six, the big numbers when instead you got of actually doing anything subscribers, you really can't. Right. <laughs> and, and that's when that comes into play. I absolutely am starting to understand that because when you get enough people commenting on videos and you, you're getting up there in the number of videos and then the number of comments on each individual video, it's hard to keep up. You know, you just mm-hmm. sometimes you just don't have the time to respond back. And that's why in some of my videos I've said, you know, like on the older Friday nights, I've actually said, guys, I so appreciate your comments and everything. If I don't answer back, it doesn't mean I haven't seen them. It doesn't mean I haven't uh, appreciated them. I just don't have the time to do it. And it's not that I'm putting you off and I think that I'm better than you because I'm not. <laughs> but I, I just I just don't have the time to answer every single one. Yeah. Right. Oh, we fully understand that completely. Mm-hmm. Right now, so, you are sitting at 4,277 subscribers. 
So you're you're still doing pretty damn yes. good. <laughs> yeah, not too bad for a little over a year and a half. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there are lulls where, you know, right now I'm kind of in a lull. I haven't seen a lot of subscribers. Usually I'd see a good half dozen or a dozen per day. Right now I'm just seeing a couple per day. And, and it's, it's an ebb and flow thing. You really cannot get frustrated with this. You, you've got to keep chugging along. The, the, oh, the best yes, thing definitely. that you can do in order to, to keep things going is stick to a schedule you know that that's that's like youtube 101 is like you, you just like a tv show you mm -hmm. stick to a schedule you figure it out and people will start going oh it's monday oh it's wednesday oh it's friday tony should have a new video out and I usually put them out, I found through my analytics that about the best time for some on ball reason to put them out is around 6 p.m. my time. So I'll wait until 6 p.m. Sometimes I have a real problem with that because I'll have this great video that I want to get out there. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, I go, you know, if I put it out on 6 p.m., that is the opportune time to get the most eyes on it at that time. And that's when, you know, when you get the most eyes on it, it all at one time, YouTube goes, oh, this is important. People are, are, you know, interacting with this. So it'll go higher up in the ranks. Right. Um, but, you know, it's like you stick to a schedule and people start to know, just like a TV show, this is when I can rely on seeing his stuff. And YouTube's mm -hmm. gotten a lot better with that. They used to have a thing where you could click on the little subscribe gear and you could say, okay, send me an email when a new video goes up. Well, they've taken that away and now they just do it naturally. So that's oh, yeah. really nice. Don't have to think about that. Yeah. I like. Um, I've noticed that people we've had on, and we've had a few bunch. Of, we've had a few YouTubers on. Um, last week we had Eye of Soul, who does anime, animation reviews, mm -hmm. and I've noticed that the people who are consistently good have a schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, she has planned. Well, in her case, she has to plan really plan it out because she's got to plan out when she's going to watch the series. She's going to. Review. She's got to plan out when she's going to put it. She does a lot of little other little stuff for her videos. So, but having it planned out as opposed to, oh, I guess I mm -hmm. should do a video today. Yeah, yeah. And, well, next month maybe I should do. A video. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if you keep consistent, you do it on a fairly regular basis. People look at that because I'll I'll go to a video that I've come across that I absolutely loved, but then I'll go to their channel and I'll see their last video before that was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, well, I really hope I see this person again, but I probably won't subscribe to them. And even if you subscribe, they, it's really hard for their subscription stuff to show up in the list. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I have... Yeah, uh, and I, I know we've sat here, even with your channel, Skunky and I have both subscribed to you, and we'll sit there and we see you post on Twitter saying, hey, this new video's out. I'll go look at my subscription list. It's not there anywhere. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, YouTube but, is, you know, some things they do well and some things they just don't. Right. But then that's where the consistency comes in because we go, it's Wednesday. There should be a video. So then we go over to your page. Right. There should be a video because we know on this day you do video. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, that's when marketing comes in. That's when you start socialing it out on your, your Facebook page and your, you know, your Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. I try and get my hands in a few things, not too many, because there's, you know, as you know, there's 50 billion things out there right. you could get wrapped up in that aren't <laughs> oh, always yeah. going to, you're not always going to see the benefit of. So there's a few things like Instagram, Facebook, and, and Twitter that I do consistently. And then some things like my, my website right now. I'm really not much of a blogger, so I don't enjoy writing big things. So what I do is mm -hmm. I just have a service called IFTTT, which is called If Then Then That, where you can set up, if this happens, do this. So say if, oh. if I post something on Instagram, it'll automatically get posted to my website. Right, and it's it's just a wonderful little service, and you know that's it, it's kind of automated, and but it gets the word out. Google notices the activity on my website, and I'm hoping to uh, you know buckle down and at least do a blog post a week. But right now <laughs> it's just like you know just this automated stuff as far as you know when a video goes goes up, it automatically gets posted to my website, and when I post something on Instagram, it automatically gets posted to my website. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh you. Yes, dear. Co-host. <laughs> Write that down. 
That too. Dear, I know all about if this, then that, because we use it in our back end system a lot. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Yeah, it's great. You can make that thing do almost anything. If if it's if it's six o'clock, turn my lights on in my house. You know, just all kinds of wacky stuff. Mm-hmm. It's capable of quite a bit of stuff. That's why we use it. See, like she was saying earlier, she gets these bright ideas and throws them to me. Sometimes I've already gotten there. <laughs> hey, my job is to, my job is to be cute and make things cute. Okay. There you go. She's just the eye candy of this operation. And the art. Mm-hmm. And the art department. <laughs> right. She does all of our graphics and things like that. Nice. So. Nice. Although um, I do have to mention, I've not said it in a while. I've got to go ahead and mention it. Uh, skunky. Yes. Don't. Mahogany. <laughs> Did she pronounce that wrong? <laughs> uh, obviously. <laughs> It's a little inside joke with us. Uh, there's a cartoon series she and I both watch, and there's a very particular scene where <clears throat> this great big powerful being, his name is King Yama, he's going on about his, about his desk being mahogany, and he goes on for like ten minutes about it being mahogany. And Skunky got cracked up over that, and now she can't hear the word mahogany without cracking up again. <laughs> That's funny. It, it's made from wood that breathes from three hundred year old wood that breathes fire. <laughs> oh wow! It's from Dragon Ball Z. He, he, oh okay. okay. The problem with me is that once I've heard a joke, all I need to hear is the punchline again, and my Im- brain immediately remembers the whole joke. Oh well, I'll, I, I get like that myself. You're not alone. Mm-hmm. It's really horrible when we're trying to film because. We're about to film. He goes, three, two, one, and then he says something right before he goes, welcome, friend, and I'm laughing like a hyena, and nobody knows why. (laughs) (laughs) That's why anytime you watch any of our cocktail videos, as soon as the video starts, she's over there giggling and giggling and giggling. It's not because she's drunk. It's because I've said something (laughs) and then edited it out just to make her crack up. That memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's goofy. You know, I, I I get that way. Just the, these little simple, silly, stupid things. Mm-hmm. Um, like like I absolutely love the the TV series The The Office. I think I'm on my first or, or my fifth run through of The Office. I just never get tired of it. And there's this one episode where they're doing uh, parkour at at the starting, and it's just hilarious. It just cracks me up every time I see it. And all somebody has to do is talk about parkour, and it'll take me back to those scenes. And it's <laughs> just like, oh my goodness, what are you laughing at? Are you an idiot? <laughs> well, it's, we have that too. I mean, I I speak sometimes speak in movie movie uh, quotes. <laughs> Uh-huh. Oh, we both do that, dear. Oh, well, you know, know it's, it's how somebody speaks a language and nobody understands or speaking something. It's like, excuse me, stewardess, I speak jive. <laughs> you are true nerds. That's exactly <laughs> what mm-hmm. yep. yep. I mean, if anybody has not seen Airplane, they have lived a a very, very... Um, I knew what this, this that link was going to be in the, in, the, in the live chat. Um... <laughs> They've lived a very ch- uh, sheltered existence. Sheltered life. Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, it, it's it's kind of scary and kind of sad because as you get older, you've got these younger people who have no idea what you're talking about. Absolutely none. And you feel so old. I, I was watching, uh, I think it was MeTV the other day, and they had the the... I dream of genie anniversary that they were going to mm-hmm. do like 50 episodes because it was 50 years <laughs> old. And I'm going, are you freaking serious? I used to watch this when I'm a kid and it's 50 years yeah. old. That makes me what? Like 280 <laughs> something. I, my my um, boyfriend always tells this joke. He likes, he likes the real older music and I mean real old sometimes. And he was listening to this radio station that says, your children and your grandchildren had their radio stations. Now you have yours. Yep. <laughs> yep. The oldie station, when when I was a kid, used to consist of 50s music, and now it's 80s music. Yeah. And I'm going, 
seriously, you're going to put my music that I graduated <laughs> high school on on the oldie station? You're going to tag oh, yes. that with an oldie monitor? Oh my goodness! No, it doesn't mm-hmm. help me that I watch a lot of old. I listen to a lot of old time radio. Oh, I love old time radio. So I was watching Dragnet today, and I said, you know, you're watching old time TV when the perfect gift for somebody in the hospital is like carton of cigarettes. <laughs> In the hospital, <laughs> his partner gets shot. Frank gets shot. He's in the hospital. He, he uh, Joe's girlfriend makes it to the hospital first because he's still doing the thing. And she's like, "I bought him a, can- a carton of cigarettes," and he's like, "So did I." Yep. <laughs> That's goofy. Holy oh, really well, crap! <laughs> actually, yesterday, uh, Skunky was doing some custom graphics for me, and. Oh, yeah. The graphics I specifically I wanted was Nick and Nora Charles. That's William Powell and Myrna Lloyd from the Thin Man series of movies. Okay. Or if you watch, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Or if you're in our live chat, those the, the um, video that plays on Charlie's side before our show starts. Uh-huh. Those are all clips from Thin Man. Oh, okay. exactly. Okay. Well, my one of my all-time favorite movies is the Thin Man, and then the rest of the series was good too. Well, Skunky did these graphics for me, and I decided to show them off, show them to some friends of mine online, so I posted the p- images of them, and everybody said, oh, it's so nice, you got to do special graphics of your grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And I said, that's William Powell and Myrna Lloyd, <laughs> one of the most famous couples who acted together ever in Hollywood. And even actually, That's not my grandparents. <laughs> I'd be living someplace better if this were my grandparents. This, the great thing about them is even when they divorced, he recommended her for films. And, and films that he was in with her. Wow. Yeah. Because he, he valued her as an actress, they just couldn't, they didn't work well as a couple. That's, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. I watched a video of, of people like that. Somebody put in like a top ten list of actors that... Um, were were like romantically involved uh, for the story, but just hated each other on on the set, and it mm-hmm. and it was just really interesting. Yeah, they were fantastic, though. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the, any of the Thin Man movies. No, I haven't. Oh, you need to watch them, especially if you like the old time stuff like that. They they had such a chemistry together. It was just it was beautiful. Nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and look them up. I've got a, a few different services that I'm sure I can find them on. Oh, they're on YouTube. Oh, um, they're public domain, so they're available on YouTube, the whole yeah. series. Oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'll look that up. Unfortunately, but, Topper isn't... Well, Topper goes back and forth depending on who decides to pick it up. That's another thing. Yeah. It's uh, Clark... Cary Grant? Yeah, Cary oh. Grant. Uh, I cannot remember her name, though. But he's basically a ghost. Yeah, the ghost. Mm. Somebody their banker. Look up Johnny Carson and Jack Webb on the Clipper Caper. That uh, oh, <laughs> the Clapper Caper. That's funny. I yeah, that. that's hilarious. <laughs> wow. But yeah. it, it just really bothers me that here these people are. They don't know these classic actors and actresses anymore. I, yeah, I get the fact that they were in the 30s and 40s, but still, some I things heard. are classics. Yeah, so it, it's just like you know, it, it's just like knowing the very basics of of breathing, and and mm-hmm. some of them have no idea who these people are, and it's just like, oh wow. You don't have to go say I me. Mean, I don't care if they're thirties. Bach and Beethoven and Mozart were in the what? Exactly. Shakespeare was in the what? <laughs> yeah, you know that's just basic stuff. I had a little Hell. girl who you know, a teenage girl, asked me. She had no idea what the Brady Bunch was. <laughs> That's scary. That right there is scary. Uh, There's one not too long ago, The Lord of the Rings. Right. Some friends of my daughter went and saw the movie and said, oh, we love the movie. Daughter said, you need to read the book. Oh, they made a book out of it already? Oh, jeez. <laughs> and they were dead serious. Hey, at least they weren't the ones who were saying that Lord of the Rings was copying Harry Potter. Yeah, one of her friends actually said said? that, too. Yes! Oh, my. Copying Harry Potter. Okay, then. So you're like, are you that stupid? 
sure it's... And she said, well, what's wrong? There, sure it's, it's obviously copying it. No. I'm sure Tolkien and, and Rawling was just the best of friends there. Yeah. Here, can I copy off your paper? Yeah, I wouldn't call it stupid, Charlie. I don't like calling people stupid. I think it's just a cultural unawareness. I mean, yeah, it's it's just ignorance, uh, generational ignorance. So we have but five it, channels. If they it's not like corrected, it leads so to stupidity. Of everything. <laughs> If we don't correct it, it leads to stupidity, remote. though, dear, and you know what happens then. Huh? If we don't correct it, it leads to stupidity, and you know what happens then. Donald Trump gets elected? Exactly. <laughs> no, seriously, though, if they don't learn, they become stupid permanently. Yeah, it's, it's just, you know, I, I, I love teaching people what I know. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite things to do is actually teach people what I know about online marketing because it just gives me a thrill because in doing something like that, you've empowered them to go out and do something because I, I've right. worked, I've worked um, at home for probably seven years now. And mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it was spurred through a job that I had that I was at for eight and a half years, and I did this company's website. And after eight and a half years, they decided they were going to outsource, or or they were going to to go ahead and let me go because they found somebody who could do it a little bit cheaper. Now that mm -hmm. was. In my mind, that was totally disrespectful. Mm -hmm. It was it was a lack of loyalty that I showed them, and I said I will never work for someone again. And, and basically, that was my jumping off point. Mm -hmm. And so I learned, you know, first I, I learned just by doing and by learning from others how I could make multiple streams of passive income. I mean, that's the goal: multiple streams of passive income in order to make a living online and not have to do that anymore. And now I don't have to worry about going out and deal with traffic <laughs> and I don't have to worry about micromanaging bosses <laughs> and everything. If I if I choose to work for somebody else, it's because I've made that choice. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean mostly it's just all these little little streams of income doing the, all these different things that make it so I can stay home. And I love sharing that with people because I hear so many people anymore who are going, I hate my job, I hate my boss, and I have to do this job. I have to find a job. I have to find work. And it's just like, no, listen, this is the 21st century. You don't have to find a job. You can make a job. What you can exactly. do is find your passion, figure out how to turn that passion into money and work at it and do it because there's no get-rich-quick schemes. This That's garbage. <laughs> the only people who get rich quick off those are the people who are spawning them. You know, Otherwise, there is no easy way to make money overnight. But the thing mm. is that if you, if you – usually when you're doing stuff like I do, you work harder than you would on a nine to five because basically your virtual office door never closes. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing about that. <laughs> oh, we know that one very well. I'm a, free, I'm a freelance designer, so that's what I was <laughs> So, so you kind of know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's just like the the door never closes. But if you love what you're doing so much, you've got to. I mean, that's one thing that I've had to learn to do is I've had to learn mm -hmm. to, uh, you know say, okay, I've got to stop because I'm having so much fun that the line between fun and work is blurred anymore. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm having so much fun, I don't want to stop. But guess what? My my wife needs some attention every once in a while. you know, Or I, may, I need to go out and actually be social in the real world. But I'm having so much fun doing this that it's hard to stop sometimes. We know exactly <laughs> what it's like. You can relate. Oh, I, oh yeah. I, I was talking, you know, you know, they go out and see the sunshine out of the dark cave that somebody records in. <laughs> um, it's I not a dark cave. Got to get out of your mother's basement every once in a while. <laughs> it's not a basement. It's it's a well, well, dark. it's a room. There were windows at one point. Well, no, but I mean, that's what they say about nerds, you know. Yeah, You're always. Years old mm -hmm. living in your mother's basement. Um, since you were talking about marketing, what do you think about marketing books 
and marketing programs that you see online that tells you things like spam the hell out of your tweeters. Oh no! Uh, uh, send, send out twenty eight million um, newsletters. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, there are some things that that you know, I, you you learn by doing and you learn by the people's reputation behind this stuff mm-hmm. you've got you've got to do your research and once you trust the person putting out the stuff then you start to pay attention to what they say but you know it, you, you learn on twitter i mean twitter is is so busy anymore there's so much noise on it um and, and there's uh, there's various opinions on it um but you know i i i put out some something over Twitter when I have something to say. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, I don't. You know, occasionally I'll, I'll put out every, uh, success quotes and, and stuff like that because, like I said, I like to share other people's experience with success so somebody else can pick it up. But you know, I'll do it when I need to. You know, and I, you know, I there are some things that I don't do that I know that I should have been doing years ago. Like you know, if you establish a mailing list. The, the, the gold is in the mailing list. And I'm not speaking from mm-hmm. experience. I'm speaking from watching other people succeed with it. Because once they opt in to your mailing list, they basically said, I am giving you permission to sell me stuff. And, you know, of course you provide very valuable information for free. But right. you, you kind of create products and services or other things around that too. So you know, down below in the bottom of your newsletter, you go, oh, and by the way, I've got this this new book out. If you'd like to go over and purchase it on Amazon, here's the link or something like mm-hmm. that. But you know, the whole thing is to actually get people to realize that you do care about their success and you do care about them, and that's the only way. Because it, it's like a used car salesman. You know, marketing and people in marketing have to get over that stigma of being used car salesmen because so many mm-hmm. people in marketing have done so much damage that you know you've got to dig yourself out of this hole that they've already put you in from the get go <laughs> and get people to see that you're not this snake oil salesman that you do actually care about them and once you've established the trust then they start to pay attention to what you know they start to go well I wonder what he has to to buy and and then they'll start paying attention to you, but you've got to get over that stigma that that people have created that you know they're just in it for the money, and, and there are people like that. But usually, with people like that, you can see right through them. Yeah. Or Charlie Cannon and, and, and rolls his eyes and sighs at me when I go, "Hey, look at this," and he goes, <sighs> which happens quite often. Yes. Don't yes, look indeed. Snooky. This comes from Nigeria. Don't do it. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, we've had a few is one situations of my, my, like that. Uh, Achilles heel, and so I'm always looking for marketing ideas and stuff. And I'll show it to Charlie, and he goes, <sighs> <laughs> "Where did you get this from?" Well, this person, they were saying they got that. <sighs> <laughs> it's like, well, see, usually the only thing, the only things that I will push online are things that, first of all. I've had experience with, and second of all, I've had success with. If, if I don't know about it, I'm not going to push it because that's dishonest. You're just not going to, you know, you're not doing yourself any favors. Your, your reputation is going to be tarnished because you're you're trying to make a quick buck, and that's just that's just customer service 101. You know, you treat customers well so they come back and they're reoccurring customers. But you know, you just don't throw stuff out there. But if I haven't used it and I haven't had success with it, I won't push it. Oh, let me ask you this along these same lines. Uh, you can get a pretty good feel of how we are right here, especially when we do our cocktail videos. Uh, we're dressed nicely, we were well lit, we work behind an actual bar, mm-hmm. and one of the things we do with this, and this will take a little back, bit of back explaining, but we'll get there, is we have a hard rule that says no bottles on the bar top unless it's a sponsored video. Okay. Unless a company sends us a specific brand of vodka, says use our vodka in your next video. We'll do it, sure, but we make sure to tell them up front, hey, they sent us this bottle of vodka, that's why it's on the bar top. Mm-hmm. 
But if we're doing a drink recipe, we already have everything pre-measured out. We do not put any bottles on the bar top. We don't advertise for free for them. Okay. But at the same time, there's other drinks video people out there. And they have all kinds of bottles piled on the bar top. They push certain brands, whether or not that brand is sponsored the video or not. Uh, they make a lot of noise. Uh, they always have two or three girls hanging around in bikinis. I'm not naming any names here. <laughs> I'm not naming any names here, but our longtime listeners know who we're talking about. Uh, myself, I feel that just drives the viewers away. Because you know, they it, don't it make it about the drink. Though. Are they getting the views? Oh, good lord, are they get the views. They get views, but it's not... We do it to teach people how to make a good cocktail. Uh -huh. They're having a party. Yeah. Yeah. It, they're you know, they're it, going, it, hey, it, look at these the girls wearing bikinis. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of goofy. But, I mean, they're they're getting the views. So, if they... I, I feel that if, if they're comfortable with that... Go ahead and do it. If, if they're getting the views and, and making the income from it, if it works, then yeah, okay. But I mean, there are some things like, for, for instance, along those lines, along those same mm -hmm. lines, I don't swear. I, I mean, I don't swear in, in my videos, but I don't swear, you know, I, I, it just, it, I just don't do it. But I, I always figure, you know what, if you don't swear in your videos, you've got a better chance of getting a wider range of audience than you do if you don't. Because I, I don't remember ever watching a video and go, you know what, they just don't swear enough, I'm not going to subscribe. <laughs> you know. But, I mean, there are people like PewDiePie who does the gaming videos where he, he does nothing but gaming. And mm -hmm. he's got a potty mouth. But the thing is, this guy has is making literally he is making it, it it was put out on the web just like a couple months ago he's making four million a year yeah because people love his stuff i don't like his stuff because i can't get over the language because mm. he swears a lot and it bothers me but the thing is that if he stopped that i bet that i would become a subscriber and he would lose any subscribers but you know that's a personal thing with me. But there are a lot of people who do not care about that, and he—the right. proof is in the pudding. He's making four million dollars a year from it. Mm -hmm. It just—I think it's just a mainly how you want to run it. But myself, like I said, we try to do cocktail videos to teach people here's how to make a drink. Uh huh. And then you've got others out there that just want to yell and have a party atmosphere. And hey, look at these girls wearing bikinis. And they what? might get around to the drink eventually. Right, but I think the problem we, we run into, and it's, this is actually the central problem, is not so much, we don't care, we don't care so much about, we've watched his videos. We, we, sometimes we watch for entertainment value, but we can't seem to find the people who would watch our videos. Mm. You know, so, because when you have all those out, it's, it's that weird thing where you're going, hey, We've got a product, we've got an entertainment, we're engaging, yet nobody's watching. Well, I should say, people are not watching on YouTube. People on iFood seem to love us. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, we get more views on iFood than we do YouTube. Yeah, we, I mean, we're, we're, in, the, we're, we're in almost, what, we're almost in, we're in five, high five-digit viewership mm -hmm. on iFood. We are in, we've probably not really cracked a thousand on YouTube. Same videos, same amount of marketing. Yeah, we can't figure out what is not with YouTube that iFood, because the iFooders love us. I think maybe because, <coughs> excuse me, iFood is actually picked for, it's like a foodie channel. Food right, yeah. right. It, it, it's, got, it's got a targeted audience. And, and that's why you're probably doing better over mm -hmm. there. I mean, I, I submit my videos to a couple of food uh, Reddit subreddits, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and most of my traffic comes from Reddit rather than the the channel. You know, people will find my videos through related videos, and you know that's when you start looking at your analytics, and you you kind of go, okay, oh, yes. well this doesn't seem to be working, and this does, and you know it's just like, okay, what are my most popular videos right now, and how do they differ from my 
least popular video, even though I'm doing the same thing, you know, basically the same format, what makes mm -hmm. this different from this? And that's when you kind of got to, you know, and that's where I wish I had a left brain thinker person <laughs> along with me because I, I hate that kind of stuff. I hate the analytics, but mm -hmm. I know I've got to do it. I love making yep. the videos, but, you know, when it comes to all this numbers and all this other stuff, it's just like, ugh. Yeah, well, Mr. Le Mr. Left Brain over there is a left brain when it comes to that. We've tried a little bit of Reddit, and honestly, the cocktail subreddits on Reddit, they've looked at our videos and said, why isn't she wearing a bikini? Yeah, uh, you know, one thing I have found about Reddit that I've come to the conclusion, I know I'm going to probably piss some people off who love Reddit, Reddit is like the gaming forums that I used to frequent when I was a gamer as a teenager. It's mm -hmm. made up of these little power-hungry people who love to bash other people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like I haven't found, you know, and, and I don't hang out on Reddit a lot, so I really, you know, it, it's probably a, a conclusion that I shouldn't be coming to, but my experience with Reddit it mm -hmm. drew me to that conclusion. It's just like it's all these little power-hungry people who are just out to bash people. And it's just like I, I don't like doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll very rarely post one of my videos to the subreddits anymore because I, I don't like getting the negative feedback, mm -hmm. especially when it's not constructive. If you're just going to bash me, I don't want to hear it. I'm exactly. not one of those people who, in, you know, enjoy leaving your comment on my video because you're nasty. You don't have to be that way. That's a choice. If yeah. you've got something constructive to say, that's awesome. I want to hear from you. But if you're just out there to be a little troll, you know, just keep on walking. Yeah, I mean, I think when I really started telling him not to start posting Reddit is when the commentary was about his hand. Right. Or his glasses, which you don't have your glasses on tonight. But it was like, why is your... And he wasn't even if white asking about his hand. He was like, why is your hand so screwed up? And what's with the black glasses? What are you, Ray Charles or something? I'm like, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I've had a couple people in my, my videos. Uh, like I said, I show the food. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll hold it up to the camera. And as I'm getting older, along with... I've got a frozen shoulder right now. But along with that, as I'm getting older, I, I'm starting to shake a little bit more. And, mm -hmm. and some people brought that you know why are you shaking what kind of drugs you on and stuff like that and you know i'll explain to him you know as i'm getting older i start to shake a little bit more plus i've got a frozen shoulder which isn't helping me any because my arm gets really tired when i just hold it up to the camera for a few minutes yeah. um so you know i explain that to him but anymore um i just let the comments go you know it's very rarely i'll just delete a comment if it's if it's like saying something nasty about my family and, and just being nasty just beyond what i i'll put up with i'll delete a comment but otherwise i'll just ignore it because i realize that a comment is basically an approval according to youtube mm-hmm you know, they'll see, that's why there, there's somebody, and, and if you're listening out there, listen close, <laughs> there is at least one or two people who will thumbs down my video immediately when it goes up. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the thing they don't realize, and like I said, listen up, is a thumbs down to YouTube is the same as a thumbs up. So I don't care. <laughs> if you want to hurt me, don't thumbs up or thumbs down. Just ignore it. But your thumbs down exactly. it to YouTube, they go, oh, this video got attention. So, you, you know, you can continue <laughs> to thumbs down me mm -hmm. as much as you want. All I do is go, ha ha, more cash for me. Haters going to, we use the kids' phrase, haters going to hate. Yep. <laughs> oh, yes. A stranger in live chat just mentioned, she said this, this is relatable. She said, find you a stretch therapist. She had a frozen frozen shoulder for almost a year until she went to a stretch therapist and they fixed it for her right away. Yeah, well, I, I, I've had a frozen shoulder before and it was actually when mm -hmm. I was working as the, the webmaster for that one company I was talking about. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had insurance back then. When you're working for yourself, <laughs> insurance is through the roof. And, and I oh, yeah. 
you know, but they sent me to somebody who, uh, a therapist who did this stuff, and, and you know, I went through, and they got me a brand new chair, a, a real nice chair that was accommodating for me, and this mm-hmm. nice mouse that was kind of like a joystick. <laughs> Rather than a mouse, because when you're with a mouse, your your wrist is going to go from left to right. With this joystick, your whole arm goes back and forth. And it was a mm-hmm. scotch joystick. And I love this thing because it didn't hurt to do that. But, you know, when, when you don't have insurance, you're just kind of screwed. You're just kind of going, okay, well, I'm you know, hopefully it'll work itself out. But if it doesn't, then this is me now. Just call me Gimpy. <laughs> I, oh, I know exactly how that is. So, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly how it is. I'm lucky. I've got good insurance, but I don't even actually need it that often because of the hand. So many people uh-huh. like to go, well, what's wrong with your hand? Why is your hand all messed up? That hand is what pays my insurance. Oh, okay. Well, you know, more power to uh, you then. Long story short, the surgeon who was supposed to be repairing the hand from an accident I had, he actually screwed it up worse and then went on vacation for a month. Oh, joy. Yeah, yeah. It, we, we won't get into the medical profession. You know, <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned, doctors are there to keep you sick. Mm-hmm. You know, Pretty because it, it, they, that's the way they make their money. Is you know, there are so many things out there that have been out there that had been like wonderful, wonderful things that would cure something or make people's mm-hmm. life better, and the FDA will not approve it. Why won't they? Re- Approve it because if it's cured, you can't make any more money off of it. Mm -mm. So let's keep them sick. Let's feed them medicine every single freaking month for something that could be cured so we can continue to make money off of it. Or the cure can't be easily bottled. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But, you know, most things, you know, like I I remember when I was a teenager, for some reason, I have always had back problems. And my back went out when I was a teenager. My dad had this little bottle of of stuff called DMSO. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he spread this thing on my back, and I got a garlic taste, an instant garlic taste in my mouth as it went to my bloodstream. But it, it was gone almost instantly. It was amazing. And then it's just like the FDA doesn't want DMSO, you know, available. Yep. So, I mean, I guess it's available for, like, animals and stuff, yeah. but not readily available for human beings. And it's just like, I know, been there, done that, mm-hmm. that this stuff works, but I realize that, you know, if, it, if it's a cure-all, you don't want it on the market because you can't make money off of people. Exactly. Uh, one of the medications I use now, which... Not to get too heavy into my medical situation, but I have to have a specific painkiller. Mm-hmm. And I can't take it orally because of the dosage needed. And my doctor who prescribes it for me, I actually get the prescription field, take it to him, along with a bottle of DMSO meant for animals, and a bottle of aloe vera gel, and he compounds it all together into a gel that I use. Ah, nice. And yeah. it works for you? It works beautifully. Awesome. And, and he worked this out himself, and he's actually doing clinical studies now, thanks to the FDA, to make this a commercially available prescription compound, rather awesome. than him having to do it just for his certain patients that have it. Uh, well, that would be nice. You know, I'm a cynic when it comes to stuff like this, so I'll believe that mm-hmm. when I see it happen. He's trying. He's but, really trying. Know, I, I hope he gets it through. But, you know, if, if it's a cure-all for something, he, he's going up a hill. Well, it's it's a way to where there's certain people like myself where regular painkillers don't do a damn thing for us. Okay. I can sit here and just pop Loratabs day in and day out and have no effect. Mm. So when I'm in pain, which happens quite often, I need something stronger. I need actual morphine. Okay. But the dosage of morphine I need would kill a person. Oh, wow. Yeah. But if you compound it with DMSO, yeah, if you compound it with DMSO and cut the DMSO with aloe vera, it can be applied topically and it works instantly. Sweet. (laughs) It's just a lot of trouble taking the prescription, getting the prescription filled, taking the pills to the doctor. He crushes them. He mixes them with DMSO. He mixes it with aloe vera and all that. Mm-hmm. 
Well, if it works, like I said, that's the bottom line. That's yep. awesome. And it does. It's the difference between me lying on the floor, beating my head on the floor and screaming, and sitting here doing this show. Well, I mean, that might make a good YouTube video, but other than that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at yes. this guy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we actually know someone who started a new YouTube series. They just started it the other day. Uh, let's see. What was their name? Sleepy... Sleepy Toes. Sleepy Toes Kitten Face. Yeah, Sleepy Toes <laughs> Kitten Face. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder where people get their names. I mean, as a gamer, you know, uh, uh, growing up, seeing some of the people's names, I go, how did you come up with that? That is just goofy, you know. I, I, I you know, well, one, of, one of my names is Bacon Van Dam, but, you know, but it's just like you know, you can understand that. But some of these other names are just so esoteric. It's just like, where'd you come up with that? That's the goofiest thing in the world. Bacon mm -hmm. Van Dam. <laughs> Bacon Van Dam. Oh, the Sleepy Toes Kitten Face. They're doing something really interesting. I mean, if you go look at their Twitter page or at their YouTube header. It's these cute little cuddly kittens. Did you watch the video? And so they're, they're doing kitten videos. Uh, which is old school. But <laughs> no. It's, it's probably getting like 50 billion views, right? They just started this week. They just posted their first real video like two days ago. Uh huh. And it's not kitten videos. <laughs> what, well, what are they? Hold on. Um, What's the name again? I'm looking them up. A Sleepy Toes Kitten Face. Sleepy Toes, spelled just like yeah. Sleepy regular? Toes Kitten Face, okay. spelled just the way it sounds. Okay. I've Let's linked to their Twitter okay, in the live chat. Channel. Yeah. They've got two videos. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two videos. Sleepy Toes Kitten Face. They both have the same thumbnail. How am I supposed to tell what the difference? Uh... Watch what the latest the one. World. Watch the latest one. Yeah. <laughs> this dude's on fire. Yeah. This little dude's on fire. Oh, crap. This is my type of humor. Mm-hmm. They've I, just I, started, apparently, and we got sent a link from a friend. They don't have that many subscribers. No. Which I find unusual, but then again, they are just starting out. Maybe they, oh, haven't, that, maybe they haven't taken his that, marketing clues. That's <laughs> It, it, you know, it takes all kinds. It, one of the, the there's. Uh, have you ever heard of Maggie Bond? No. Maggie Bond is a little girl who's a Japanese. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. I think her her parents are once American, once Japanese, because she doesn't look full Japanese. Mm -hmm. But she started many many years ago, and what she does is spends about uh, it's usually about thirty seconds, and she just stares into the camera. And, that's, and she's got these big, lovely eyes. But, I mean, that's all she does. And she's got, she's had views since the beginning of time. And uh, it just floors me. And you look at people like that and you go, I don't get it. You know, mm -hmm. I put in so much time <laughs> scripting out a video, shooting a video, producing a video, putting all these elements into it and thinking it out and marketing it. And then you've mm -hmm. got somebody like Maggie Bond who sits in front of her cam and stares at it for 30 seconds, and she's got more viewers than I'll ever see. Yeah. And I, I just think, don't get it. I think that's what's going to happen that, with, these, with the Sleepy it. Toes Kitten Face person. <laughs> if, they keep this, if they keep this up, I think they're going to go very far. Because this is just... Could be. It, it, I, I'm, I'm interested because I am subscribing right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to watch this and see where they go with this. First of all, they, they, you know, they're, they, the first thing I would think is, mm -hmm. okay, both these videos have the exact same thumbnail. And, and that's not going to fly because you don't know what the video is about by the thumbnail. The thumbnail is very important. Secondly, I think it's what they want because of, they have a picture of kittens up. And you expect kittens. Right. But it, see, both of those videos have the exact same text on them. And all it is is their name. It doesn't say what this, how this video differs from this other one by mm -hmm. visually looking at it. 
and, and the title, one of the titles is 527, the other one is STKF Soon. I have no idea what a video would be like or, or what the contents of the vi either one of those videos would be. I think I it's an attempt at one of those viral things that we're always seeing. You know, it, it, and it's got to be. You know, if it's goofy enough like Maggie Bond, people will start sharing it and mm -hmm. resharing it. And, you know, you, you, there's no way you can go, guess what? I think I'll make a viral video today. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Some people, I just look at them and I, you know, and I'm going by the book and I'm doing all this stuff A to Z. And their video is going through the roof and mine isn't. And I look at <laughs> their video and I look at the elements that are supposed to make up a video, title and tags and thumbnail. And, and I just shrug and I'm going, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. That's, that's, just, that's, that's the way the it world, goes. That, that's the world of YouTube, I guess. Yeah. But, we, I what, but so. what would we do without it? Yep, Absolutely. You know, you can find anything you want on YouTube. Some of the goofiest things in the world. And reviews. And really good and reviews. reviews. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I watched a lot of review videos. You're one of the few that I'm still subscribed to. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You know, I, I had to get over... It's funny because so many of us think alike. There are, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people were saying that I copied Ken Domic. And KBD Productions TV, and he was one of the initial YouTubers that that I mm -hmm. watched as far as food reviews. But the thing is, he was doing the same. He had the same thoughts going through his head, obviously, as I did in mine. It's like, okay, let's tell the price. Well, actually, Ken doesn't tell the price, but he does get the nutritional information. Um, and you know, he 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 does he things like I do. And there are a lot of us out there who think the same. Like, I'll find something that I want to do a review on, and all of a sudden, a day before my video is set to release, one of the other few mm -hmm. food reviewers has just done a review on it. And it's something <laughs> obscure. And I'm going, did you, like, bug my house? Mm -hmm. How did you know I was going to do this? But, I mean, it, it's just incredible the way we think. But, you know, it, YouTube is a huge place, so there's room enough for everybody. So it's just like, you know, don't say that somebody's copying somebody else because that's just goofy. It's just like nobody in the world can have this one single original thought that nobody else has had. That's just stupid. Don't do not do that because that's not true. Yeah. People, you know, think oh, a yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, we've had plenty of people say, you came out with a mint julep video, but everybody else already has a mint julep video out. Yeah, but we're actually from Kentucky doing a mint julep video. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? Mint julep is like a drink that's like everywhere. So, you know, it's not like I saw somebody else's video and decided to do this. It's just like maybe I had this sometime mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, maybe somebody introduced me to it. And since I have a channel that shows you how to make these certain kind of drinks and this is one of my favorite, I decided to make a video about it. I didn't copy mm -hmm. anybody. I, I'm following my passion. Yeah, even, I mean... When Five Nights at Freddy's came out, everybody and their cousin was doing Five Nights at Freddy's. Mm -hmm. But everybody did it differently. Uh huh. You know, because it just, I mean, I watch a certain one because I like how he reacts during it. Mm -hmm. I watch, I wouldn't watch another YouTuber that I watch do reviews because I know he's not going to like it and it's going to, it's going to make him do a, a really crappy review. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But I'll watch him do some other things because I like how he does different great reviews. People right. have got to get away from that. Everything is not a competition. There's a million people on YouTube. There's enough room for. There's enough viewers for everybody. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just like I no, mean, you're not gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm probably never gonna reach the the popularity of Ken Domic. But you know what? I'm not trying to. I'm trying to be no. me and trying to be real. And I've got an audience. And a lot of that audience is saying. Some of the audience is saying, "I like you better than Ken Domic," and and that's not my goal. And I, I don't get all prideful about that, but it's just that I have something that they can relate to. So, you know, that's cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, watch Ken, too. He's, he's a good guy. But, you know, if you like me better, well, okay, that's cool. More power. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
It's yeah, I mean, okay. And if you like him better than me, that's fine too. I don't care. Mm-hmm. We did really like that. Everybody. We like that too. I mean, we've had other alcohol reviewers on our show. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like, oh God, we can't have them on because they they're other out. They do the same thing we do. Screw that. They do it completely different. We've had some brand new alcohol reviewers on here to get you know get them some popularity. Mm-hmm. They make drinks we will never make because that's not how we. I mean, we make classic cocktail drinks. They make experimental drinks that they come up with themselves. Mm-hmm. Good. If you're looking for some experimental stuff, go to them. If you're looking for a classic, go to us. We're not going to yeah. start trying to do what they do because. A, he'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie doesn't like uh, garnishes. Charlie doesn't like um, f- fancy flavors. So we're not going to be doing that. Uh-huh. I like classic drinks. Good old-fashioned drinks. And I never drink until I started working. A drink, you can go into a bar and say, hey, fix me this. They fix you that. They serve it to you. Boom, you're done. Right. Right. I don't like setting a drink on fire, tossing a drink from one hand to the other across the room, a uh, Garnishing a Bloody Mary with a whole roast chicken. It's just not your style. No. <laughs> and you will not see us do videos based on that because we don't do that. Uh-huh. And I mean, you you look at the... the even the, the, the stuff that YouTube puts out about how to be a YouTuber. And, mm-hmm. and aside from getting a schedule, one of their big things is collaboration. You know, when you start collaborating with other YouTubers who are along the same lines as you, that gets you popular, you know? Mm -hmm. So you've got to get away from this pride thing and everything, and you've got to go, you know what? I want to collab with this guy. Let's see if we can make this happen. And just recently, I collabed with uh, John from Bite and Chew Food Review. And he lives in another state. You know, we couldn't get together and actually do an in-car one, but... He did a review on a certain type of uh, chicken at Domino's, and I did a completely different flavor, and we mentioned each other. If you want to see John do the habanero chicken, go over <laughs> to his channel, and I, you know, I use annotations, and I use cards, and I use, you know, the, the description, and I say, go over there and, and look at his stuff. And this is great, because people who are exposed to John and have never been exposed to me, all of a sudden, I'm getting his audience, and he's getting my audience, and everybody's making money, and everybody's mm-hmm. happy. And you didn't have to eat the habanero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, John, I don't want to do the habanero stuff. Give me what I do, the, the Hawaiian, I, I did this pineapple bacon uh, chicken that was just delicious. And, and I said, John, you keep the hot stuff. And, you know, all the people who want to see him eat that go over there and he, 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 his nose will run for you and he'll get all sweaty and choke. And, you know, that, that's fun. And you still, that's why it's perfect for him to do it. Absolutely. I mean, he does, he does crazy stuff like that. You know, I, I've seen some challenges that he's done Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the, they're used, there's these jelly beans that Jelly Belly puts out. Um, and I can't remember right now the, the oh, name of it. Oh, yeah. But it's like these two, the, there's these jelly beans that look exactly the same, but one tastes great and one tastes like like maybe grass puke or, or peach, the, baby wipes or something. Yeah, puke, puke or peach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the bean there. boozled beans. Yeah, we've yes, seen those. Absolutely. Yeah, that. And, and it was absolutely funny to watch. But it's just like, you know, I don't I do not do that kind of stuff. I just don't enjoy that kind of stuff. And I, I said, because somebody wanted me to do that, and I said, okay, I'll do it if my son will do it with me. And so mm-hmm. I, I, I hit my son up, and I said, because he lives like right around the corner to, to me. He's like 25. And I said, do you would you do this with me? And he said, absolutely not. He says, <laughs> I, like, I tried these things, and I puked. And I said, mm-hmm. "Will you do it with me just for the video?" Absolutely not. So, <laughs> okay, fine. I can't say I blame them. Speaking of YouTubers, real quick here though, it looks like I just got this notice on my Twitter feed: Sleepy Toes Kitten Face has just released <laughs> another video. Another video. Okay, so if I refresh, I should have three, right? Yeah. Yep, there's three, and it is four one two. <laughs> What's with your titles? I don't understand your titles. I don't know. And it's the same thumbnail, too. 
You know, if this works, I'm going to be amazed, and it's one of those things I'm just going to shrug and go, I, I don't get it. <laughs> I think they don't want people to know what the video is until they actually watch it. Okay, well, I'm I, I'm going to pull this sucker up and see what's burning I mean, now. I would watch it now, but all the listeners would hear the audio from it, too. Yeah, because you're off Okay, it's, it's, it's little crystal. It looks like crystal figures that are burning with circus music going on. This is creepy. <laughs> but it's funny. Like Marble oh, Hornets? Like Marble Hornets creepy? Uh, Marble yeah. Hornets was the cause of Slender Man. Oh, no. It, well, I guess so. It's kind of like uh, kind of like clown creepy. You know? <laughs> okay. Like okay, that. yeah. That, that makes sense right there. But, you, you know, the thing was that... What just happened here is we started talking about this person who has a brand new channel, who is mm -hmm. not optimizing their stuff yet, as far as titles and description and, and thumbnails and stuff like that, but we just started talking about it. However many hundreds of, of listeners you have just learned about this person, they just tweeted you, you just mentioned them again. You know, we just did all their marketing for them. This is mm -hmm. awesome. We're, 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 we're sitting right now 407 listeners, so... Okay, yeah. well, 407 people just learned about this person. And Odds so are now, good that they're tuned in. <laughs> and and now they'll, you know, subscribe to it to see what other kind of clown creepy stuff he's going to put out, mm -hmm. or she, she's going to put out. Speaking of promotion, for those of us who were at, are at the, at the beginning, how can they find your reviews? My reviews are at youtube.com forward slash old nerd reviews. And that's straight across the board. You go to mm -hmm. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's all old, old nerd reviews. The website is oldnerdreviews.com. And uh, those are the places I hang my hat. And, of course, we have linked to those in our show notes for tonight. I so you can always pull that up, friends. Yeah. And I'm looking at your website right now. It's a decent-looking website. It's okay. It's 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 a YouTube theme. Like I said, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't really do blogging that much. Um, and, and everything there is automated. Anything that comes mm -hmm. across is automated. I, I have a couple blog posts that I actually did take the time to do. And like I said, it's something like an email list that I know I should do. I just don't have of the passion for it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'd rather make a video than I would write a blog post. Right. But um, I, ha I highly encourage those who haven't to join him for his Friday night live. I, I did the week before last. It was actually very funny and there's some exclusive content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like to talk about myself a little bit more. And, and, you know, I look at Older Friday Night as a place that is not formatted as much as my videos, and people can, can get to know the person behind the camera, which is very strange to me still, because when I first became a, a vlogger, you know, which is somebody who just shares their life on my on my main channel, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just like anybody who's a regular vlogger. You, you think to yourself, look at how mundane my life is. Why would anybody care? But the thing is, you've got to get past that. People do care to watch your mundane life because maybe it's in a part of the country they've never been in. You're going places and doing things that they might never get to do. You know, I live uh, out on, mm -hmm. on the West Coast, so I get to go to the Oregon Coast, one of my favorite places ever. And people who live in the Midwest don't get to go to beaches like this. You know, but to me, it's like... Why would anybody want to see that? To them, it's like, just <laughs> like, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you get past that, you get past the stuff of, you know, why would anybody be interested in me? They actually are. And it may never make sense to you, but it doesn't matter. Mm. Oh, Strangers in Fiction says, if you do old nerd reviews in the Google search option, it's about halfway through nerd. Halfway through nerd. Uh, halfway. I, oh, you start typing old, and halfway through nerd, it's just no nerd reviews. That's, that's awesome. It, it, that's <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's a great way to figure out what kind of videos you're going to make too. Is you yep. start to type something into Google, or you start to type something into YouTube, 
And the completed things that come down, those are the things that people are looking for. Isn't or, you know, the same thing with the search engine. When you type something into Google and you go down to the bottom of the page, all the related searches, those are videos that you could think up too. Mm -hmm. Actually, we had a friend who did a whole, for, he's doing a series of surreal videos. They're like anywhere from 10 seconds to two minutes long. Uh -huh. Very funny. Some of them are very funny. Uh -huh. He does a Friday floor where he lays on the floor and answers questions. Answer questions. And for the last Friday, he basically typed in to Google, why does, and let it fill, fill in the blank. Right. And then, asked, and then answered those questions. That's awesome. That's <laughs> and awesome. He does fantastically with it, too. That's awesome. And, and those are the kind of things that you look at yourself and you go, you know, why didn't I think of that? And mm -hmm. it's so simple. And he, it's just brilliant. The simplest things are sometimes the most brilliant. Oh, yeah, believe me, I kick myself weekly every time it comes on. Yeah, because yeah, I think he did it just the first to get used to his camera equipment and try different shots. And, you know, he does sometimes a shot where he's in it twice. Uh -huh. You know, imagine. So he started off as that, but then he had to come up with content. So he comes up with these little snippets. And mm -hmm. he's got this very dry sense of punny humor. And then, like, I, awesome. like I said, they, they sometimes they're like 30 seconds. You know, sometimes it's just him looking up at the sky and down at the floor and looking at the another, sky. Another, <laughs> another Maggie Bond in the, in the making there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, well, I'll tell you, uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys go because okay. I've taken up over two hours of your time. <laughs> hey, and, that's and what we're here for. And you know what? When I first got on, I was thinking, how am I going to make it through 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's what I, I think that was our first show, Charlie. Where I'm like, how are we going to make it two hours worth of time? <laughs> and it just flew by like it always does. It, it, it was fun. And we just mm -hmm. talked about all kinds of goofy crap and just made it work. That's awesome. That's so. what we do each time. We'd love to have you on again. In fact... Let me check, see right here. I believe we've got you already scheduled for about a month from now on October the 4th. Are you coming back then to talk with us more? If you have that time available, I will be back. Uh, we always have time available. Okay, so October 4th uh, mm -hmm. at uh, 7 p.m. I will put that on my whiteboard. Same board. time. All right. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up now then. Uh, friends, thank you for tuning in, all 419 of you that are currently tuned in. <laughs> Fantastic numbers tonight. Uh, Tony, thank you for coming on. We'll see you again next month. Well, thanks uh, for having me. As we always say at this time, friends, have a great night, a wonderful tomorrow, and a fantastic next week.